territory. For others, its tradition continued. For all, it's the chance of a lifetime. North Dakota's best battle for the ultimate prize today. Defending AA champ Dickinson Trinity faces upset-minded Hazen. Game two features a pair of time-honored programs. Fargo South, Bismarck High. The 2001 Dakota Bowl starts now. and now four wide-eyed hopefuls stand ready to stake their claims. Dickinson Trinity is looking to claim its second straight title and its second straight perfect season. The Hazen Bison, well, they're looking to claim some respect as well as a championship. They were shut out by Trinity in week three. Nobody's giving Hazen much of a chance, and that's just the way the Bison like it. Hi again, everyone. Steve Hallstrom along with Pat Sweeney. Nice to have you with us today for the North Dakota AA and AAA championship games. Pat, we start today with a Trinity team looking for its second straight 12-0 season. They are great on defense, just as good on offense, thanks in part to senior running back Kyle Steffes. Kyle Steffes is a six-footer. Trinity's top rusher and receiver, Steve. More than 1,000 yards on the ground, more than 200 yards receiving. <sighs> And he's averaging almost 10 yards a carry. You talk about domination, that is it. I was just talking to longtime Dickinson sportscaster Rod Kleining, who's covered Dickinson sports since 1974. He says Kyle Steffes is the best player he has ever seen come out of Dickinson and one of the best backs in the state this year in any class. On the other side of the football, the Titans are only giving up eight points this year. That's not eight points a game. That's eight points all year long. Eric Woodman is our sideline reporter today. And Eric, if the Bison want to pull the upset, they're going to need a big day out of Paul Wallander. Steve, you're absolutely right. Ever since the Hazen's game three loss to Trinity, 27 or nothing, they look to running back Paul Wallander. The sophomore has simply been stellar. Todd Johnson calls him the Barry Sanders of high school football. We'll see if he can actually prove that today. So far this year, Wallander has run for over 1,000 yards and has scored 17 touchdowns. He is not the biggest kid, but he is very fast, and he knows how to find the end zone. One other tidbit of information for you guys. Todd Johnson, who has been coaching for 37 years, 21 at Hazen, and he won the state title in 96, tells me before the game that there is a very good chance this could be his last game as a head coach of the Bison. Back to you guys. Very interesting stuff, Eric. You know, the Bison started out the year as pretty much a run-only offense, but they've developed a passing game in the late part of the year. They're going to need every weapon they can find today against this tough Trinity defense. We're ready to find out who will have the last word. Will it be Hazen or Dickinson Trinity? Kickoff is next on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. The 2001 Dakota Bowl brought to you live from the Fargo Dome in Fargo, North Dakota is sponsored by Wells Fargo, The Next Stage, your Senex Ampri Convenience Stores of North Dakota, Nodak Mutual Insurance, The Merchants of Maddox, Otter Tail Power Company, The Merchants of Harvey, Maricare Sports Medicine, Farmers Union Insurance, Sweeney Cleaners, Printer Solutions, National Muffler, Dr. Stephen M. Bagan of iProfessionals, Paul GMC, Taco Bell, Shields, A Country Farm Credit Services, and Northern Region Cadillac Dealers. Pat Sweeney, the numbers tell you just how dominant these two teams have been this year. You're right, Steve. Dickinson Trinity averaging more than 300 rushing yards a game. This is just one of the most dominant teams we've ever seen in North Dakota high school football. And Hazen, 241. Not That's that not bad. bad either. <laughs> Any other year, it's a, Todd Johnson was just saying that yesterday. Any other year, he said Hazen would be the top team in the state. But this is not like any other year for Dickinson Trinity. But you mentioned the passing, and, and both teams have uh, opened it up a little bit. The last time we saw Hazen here in 1996 when they won it all, I, I think they ran every play except one or two. Well, the number we pointed out in the beginning of the show, how about that point, nine points allowed per game? 
We're ready to kick wow. this one off. It's Brandon Hancock booting it away. Short man takes it, number 22 for Dickinson Trinity. That's Jaden Nelson bringing it up just across the 40-yard line, and Dickinson Trinity will have the first offensive look of the ball game. And here's our first look at the starting lineup. The quarterback, Jacob Oderman, number four, the running back, Kyle Steffes. Kimball Fawatea is the fullback. Joey Steiner and Tyler Glasser are the receivers. On the line, it's Bulk, Lynch, Oderman, the brother of the quarterback, Height, Carey. First play, Oderman swings it out near side, looking for Glasser. He's got it, shakes a tackle, out by the 50-yard line. A good gain on first down for Trinity. Starting defense on the Hazen side of the ball. Schramm, Berger, McConnell, and Geigley across the front line. Linebackers are Walden, Myra, Spears, and Grimm. Defensive backs, Marshall, Swenson, and Nathan Folk, number six, the free safety. So a gain of nine for the Trinity Titans on first down. Receivers each side. Kimball Fawate up the middle, but a whistle blows this play dead. Really before it got going. Looked like some movement along the offensive line. And that gives us a chance to mention our officials today. This crew from Williston, Dan Wick, Daryl Thompson, Jim Birch, Scott Rehack, and Mark Stengel. It was a false start on the offense. That'll back it up. It'll be a third down now and about six yards to go for the Titans. Their playoff run, 52 to nothing over Lisbon and 40 to nothing over rugby. When you can outscore two teams in the state quarters and semis, 92 to nothing, you know you've got yourself a football team. Little double wing look. Now Oderman calls his own number across the 50, inside to Hazen territory down at the 42-yard line. So the first carry for the senior quarterback results in a first down. Pat, these guys have just so many weapons, and there's not a whole lot of guys that you'll see, I guess, as far as number of weapons, but the ones they have in there are all equally potent. Boy, he had me faked out. I thought Fawatea had to carry, and he faked out the Hazen defense, too. Look at that big hole that he had there. So it'll be first down and 10 for Trinity on the Hazen 42. Just about a minute into the ball game. This is Steffes off the right side. Nothing much there. The Bison defense closes the gap off right tackle. It'll bring up a second down and about eight yards to go. And that's got to be a moral victory for the Hayes in defense, just holding him to a, a few yards. We said he's averaging about nine or ten per carry. Matt Walden and Derek Grimm among those on the stop. Walden number nine and Grimm number ten. Walden, a hard-nosed defensive leader. He's quite a story. We'll touch on him later. Fake ball to the fullback, give it to Steffes off the right side, inside the 35-yard line, down to near the 30. Mark it at the 32, that's Nathan Folk up from the free safety spot to make the tackle. That's one thing Todd Johnson said this week that we cannot do. We cannot have Nathan Folk be our leading tackler this week, the 5'10", 175-pound senior. He's a good player, but we want those guys on the front seven to be making most of the contact. We're going to bring it in for a measurement. Those just haven't been holes. Those have been like freeways here in the early going. So much is made, of course, of the skill players for this Trinity team, but that front line along the Trinity offense is so solid. Lynch at tackle, Oderman at left guard, Chad Hyatt at center, Nathan Carey the right guard, and the right tackle number 76, Casey Novotny, are the ones uh, plowing, plowing open those holes for the backs. Now the teams have been ready for a while, and now the officials are ready to go, too. So we've got ourselves first down and 10 yards to go, 32-yard line. Oderman inside handoff to Steffes. Nice job that time on the front line by number 55. That was Adam Geigley cutting in there from his right defensive end spot to trip up the running back. And his buddies closed in quickly, so it'll be second and eight. Nathan Carey, the man throwing the block that enabled the uh, two-yard gain, so it's... Second and eight here with 10 minutes to go. Oderman fakes the give, fakes the pitch, fakes himself out maybe. Yep. Gives time for the pursuit to catch up. Number 52 in on the stop for Hazen. That's John Myra. Six foot, 195 pound linebacker. Looked like, this, a, yeah, looked like a little indecision there, Steve. He had Steffes behind him and Made a couple of motions, but uh, when you think too much, it's a little too late. Well, Ryan Spears did a nice job that time. He went to the pitch man, made sure that that play was not open for Oderman. 
and Jacob had to turn the ball upfield. Draw play to Fawatea. He's got some room across the 25. Over, bowling over tacklers inside the 20. That was right about the 20 yard line. That will go for a gain of about 10. Fawatea just five foot six, but he's 212 pounds. He's a native of Hawaii of Samoan descent, and he's just a little water bug who is tough to bring down. Looks a little like Jerome Bettis out there running through guys. Would rather run over you than through you, as coach says. So now it's first down and 10, just outside the 20 yard line. Steffes off the left side, bounces off two tacklers, off three, four. The ball comes loose at the end, but the officials will say he's down. What a great run, good help. The Hazen defense flocking in mass to the ball carrier, but some great balance and some great strength by Kyle Steffes picks up five yards on first down. Steffes just does a great job following his blockers, and then he slips away from that tackle. Walden had him and lost him. Well, that might have been a little uh, early whistle there. Was his knee down before he lost the ball? I don't know. Well, the back judge emphatically ruled that his knee was down, so give him the benefit of the doubt. He saw that one pretty He's well. closer than I am. Stack line now for the Titans. They'll give it up the middle. I believe that was Fawatea coming through out of the fullback position for the carry. Indeed it was. He gains about, well, we'll call it three yards. It'll bring up a third down and about three yards to go. Fawatea just has that ability to bounce off people, and we saw a lot of second effort yesterday. A moral victory there for Hazen again, just to try to contain him, and that forces a third and short here for the tight. Big third down play now for the Hazen defense, looking to shut down this potent Trinity offense. Oderman steps inside the tackle. Cuts it up to about the 10 yard line. Judging from that spot, it should be a first down. Mike Schramm, number 76, in on the stop. And yes, he did just get enough for it, about uh, maybe, maybe a yard. Dan Wick signals that indeed it was a first down. So now the Titans, it looks like just outside the 10 yard line, would be able to get a first down without scoring a touchdown, but. The odds of that happening are fairly slim because there's not much room between the nose of that football and the 10 yard line. 7.27 to go, first quarter. Nice to have you with us from the Fargo Dome today. Dickinson Trinity on his first offensive drive. Pitch to Kyle Steffes. Looks outside, cuts inside, runs through a tackle to the goal line. Touchdown, Trinity. That's what makes him so special, the blend of strength Speed and quickness, Pat Sweeney, and it's 6-0 Dickinson Trinity. Following the block of Fawatea and then the cut and the slash and the bounce and the effort, and he's in. I mean, he, he has some speed, no doubt about it, Steve. Zared Leffer now in to attempt the extra point, but before we do, the officials will have something to say. And, and call you normally see if on defensive offsides. See if we can pick up the call. Possibly some sort of illegal formation movement on the line at any rate. It turns this into a fairly interesting extra point now. Would be called a 25 yard field goal were it to be for three points. It'll count as one. And it will count as one. So Trinity strikes first with 7.16 to play in the first quarter as Dickinson Trinity 7 pays a nothing. Wells Fargo is only checking accounts, you're not seeing the whole picture. Wells Fargo Portfolio Management Account, Mutual Funds, Annuities, Stocks and Bonds. Talk to one of our representatives about how to start reaching your goals today. Now you get the picture. Wells Fargo, the next stage. In North Dakota, pride and performance go hand in hand. It's forming unspoken friendships. It's trusting neighbors, supporting community. 
and for 70 years, it's how Setex has been doing business in North Dakota. You'll always receive high-quality, dependable, clean guard gasolines, backed by the Senex performance promise. You've got our word on it. Senex Clean Guard Gasolines, where pride and performance meet. Only at your local Senex and Pride convenience store. It's 7-0 Dickinson Trinity after a Kyle Steffes touchdown run. 10-yard touchdown run, and once he made that cut, you just had the feeling that he was going to get in, given his reputation, and he didn't disappoint. Fawatea sprung him, and he took the lane and just ran over people. Kickoff on the way. Back deep to return it is Nathan Folk. He'll take it at his eight-yard line. Up the middle, not much room. And the Trinity Pursuit catches up with the 22. In on the tackle there, number 50 for the Titans. That's Nathan Lynch, six foot one senior linebacker. So our first chance to take a look at the Hazen offense. Quarterback Chris Marshall, the running backs, Wallander and McConnell, split end Blake Olson and the flanker is Eric Swenson. On the line, Geigley at the tackle, Walsvik and Smith are the guards, Chase at center, Schramm at right tackle, Matt Walden is the tight end. By the way, the tight end is the leading receiver on this team. 22 catches for 337 yards and four touchdowns. Fake to the fullback, rolling right now is Marshall. Throwing deep upfield, looking for Folk, and it is knocked away, almost intercepted, and it is intercepted. Picked off, that's Glasser, bringing it back inside the 30-yard line. And the first turnover of the game goes Dickinson Trinity's direction. And give an assist to Kyle Steffes. Number four tipped it, number three, Tyler Glasser caught it. Well, I thought that ball had bounced and hit the floor, but a nice job here. We'll get to see it again. Todd Johnson going for a little surprise here on the opening play. It goes off of Steffes' hands, who had position on the receiver, right into the hands of Glosser. And all he had to do was head back the other way with plenty of room and Trinity in good shape inside the 30. Well, a nightmarish start for the buys, and Orderman now pitches to Steffes. Not much room, gets to the corner, but great job of pursuit that time by the Bison defense. That's Folk, number six, also number three, Eric Swenson. Senior defensive back in on the play, and the Bison did a nice job of stringing this play to the sideline. Kind of a long pitch, and that helped the Hazen defense get a little time to converge on Steffes and limit him to a, a very short game. Dickinson Trinity Titans here looking at second down and a long nine. Oderman brings him to the line. Give to Fawate up the middle, bursting oh. into the secondary. Inside the 15, down to the 12-yard line. He knocked Eric Swenson's helmet right off. The guy who finally stopped him. Unbelievable. I mean, it's like the 5-6 Fawatea just came out of a rocket, took the alley up the middle, and whammo, off goes the helmet. Some great blocking at the point of attack by the Dickinson, Dickinson Trinity line. Now it's first and 10 on the 13. Oderman give to Fawatea inside the five, turning inside to the three yard line. Well, why not? It worked before and it works again. Kimball Fawatea, the little big man, getting very close to a first down. And you, you said it, Steve. I mean, just look at the blocking. They're just blowing people away. <laughs> he slipped away from that man grabbing his shirt behind him. And again, it's the same guys, number three, Eric Swenson and number six, Nathan Falk, making the tackle. Second and one now from the three. Give to Steffes inside the one, close to the goal line. They'll whistle him down about two feet short. When you can establish that fullback, it opens up so much for an offense because then you have to sell out for the quick hitter. And it gives you some time. A guy coming through a half second or a second later will oftentimes find a lot of room after the fullback has gone through and taken some tacklers in there. So now a first down and goal inside the one yard line. Dickinson Trinity already with a 7-0 lead here with 5.45 to play. Give to Steffes, hit hard at the line. Tries to struggle to the goal line. No signal yet. They'll mark him down short. Nice stand by the Bison defense. 
That gives the Hazen fans something to cheer about, urging on their team. Looks like 52 John Myra and number nine Matt Walden. Actually, Walden on the outside there, but Myra was the man who made the hit to save the touchdown. But Trinity with another chance here, second down. Second and goal from about the six inch line. Oderman tries to sneak, nothing there. The Bison are tough inside the one. Fake give to Fawatea off the left side and Oderman on just kind of a follow option sort of a play. But the Bison defense did a nice job and Oderman will lose a yard. Well after that uh, mistake on the interception, some confidence building here for the Hayes and Bison. Again, we see John Myra, 52, 76, the captain, Mike Schramm, and let's see if they can hold him on third and goal. Oderman pitched to Steffes, cuts inside, and into the end zone for a score. Well, we see more of that quickness from Kyle Steffes just hurdling a man there and then bullying his way in. I mean, he just goes right into traffic. He's not afraid to thread that needle, and that's just what he did there. Kyle Steffes, the leader on the offense, the extra point no good, no good. by LaFour or by Leffer is no good. And so it remains 13 to nothing. Dickinson Trinity with a lead at the 435 mark of the second quarter. You're watching the Dakota Bowl Double A Championship on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. What helps Papa Murphy's win pizza chain of the year? Dough made fresh daily? You betcha. The freshest quality ingredients? Always. 100% real cheese? Oh yeah. But what really made it happen? You did. Because they know their pizza tastes best when it comes hot out of your oven. They make it, you bake it. It's that easy. To celebrate, get a family-sized, super fresh Hawaiian pizza for just $7.99. Papa Murphy's Take and Bake. Pizza chain of the year. Came from that area over there. I was there shortly after the tornado hit. Did enough damage. There was nothing left. Trucks were destroyed, their tractors were destroyed. Just blew away. It literally demolished our farm, but with the help of Nodak Mutual Insurance Company, we're still here. We can come in there, wrap arms around them as a company, and say, we'll be there. We've rebuilt, thanks to Nodak Mutual. The touchdown by Steffes, his second of the first quarter. Pat makes it 13 0. I'm sorry, Steve. He just hurdled the man there. Ryan Spears, number 19. All, all Kyle Steffes needs is just the slightest opening, and he'll hurt you. Todd Johnson said yesterday, the Hazen coach, he said, if we make any mistakes, we're, we're in big trouble. And that, that, that series proved it. They turn it over on their first play from scrimmage on an interception by Tyler Glosser, and it winds up in another touchdown by Steffes. So Trinity with 13 points in a span of less than three minutes. The Trinity offense has run about a dozen plays so far here in this first quarter. The Hazen offense has run one. The first offensive play of the game for the Bison was intercepted. Total offense there you see at 92-0 in favor of the defending champs. Joe Volk with a kickoff squirts out of bounds inside the five-yard line and he'll be brought back and Hazen will start with very good field position. Todd Johnson told us that he believes that Dickinson Trinity is going to score at least three times. So he says we have to score three times ourselves to have a chance of winning the ball game. I don't think that he envisioned that with 435 to go, his team would have been scored on twice already. Eric Whitman has a report from the sidelines. Eric. Thanks, guys. Uh, Randy Gordon, head coach of the Titans, told his guys to be prepared for the run. They tried throwing them off a little bit. The Bison did by throwing the ball early, but they are going to go back to the run and watch for the Titans to bring the pressure. He wants to see a full out blitz. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, Eric. Hardest working sideline guy in the business right there. We appreciate him very much. First and 10 for Hazen at the 35 yard line. Marshall gives it Sean McConnell, the first man through. Not much there. Stood up by the Trinity defense. Number 73 in on the play. That's Brent Marshbecker among others. Well, he was just uh, surrounded in a hurry, and that Marshbecker just met him immediately, and then 
It was just a matter of time before uh, some of his pals came out to help, including number 50, Nathan Lynch. So Todd Johnson, uh, on the, at least on the first play of this series, they did not turn over, it over, but they only got a one-yard gain, if that. Well, you start with the modest accomplishments and work from there. Right. Second down and nine now for Hazen Marshall back to pass. Near side, throwing and catching his Wallander, but a nice tackle there. Nathan Lynch coming out from his linebacker spot to make the tackle a very short gain. Actually, they're going to mark it as no gain. It'll be third down and 10. Right, Lynch uh, read that play very well, and they got the man in the open field, and he hauls him down right at the line of scrimmage. So Todd Johnson uh, trying the run, then trying the pass. We'll see what he does now on third and a long nine. So tough to stretch laterally against this Dickinson Trinity defense because it runs so well. Marshall now on third and long. Little fake option in the near side. Keeps his footing across the 40. A nice gain out to the 44-yard line. Depending on the mark, though, it will be about a yard and a half short of the first down. Hazen's been running that option game, and they say it's worked very well the last five games, and they catch Trinity a little bit off guard here. Nice moves there by Chris Marshall to pick up some extra yardage, and we'll see if uh, Hazen goes for it here. Well, an interesting decision. You're down 13 to nothing, and the last thing you want to do is give the Titans possession inside your own territory. But Todd Johnson says, we need to establish something. Let's give it to our guys and see what happens. Marshall, give. That's McConnell. Bowls over a tackler. Oh, across the 50-yard line and inside Dickinson Trinity territory. What a big confidence boost that'll be for that Hazen offense. Sean McConnell is Hazen's bruiser, six feet, 225-pound senior. He says, hey, Mr. Fawatea, we can do that too. And look at all the red shirts it takes to uh, bring him down. A great job on the left side of the line of scrimmage by that Hazen offense. Geigley, the left tackle, Walsbick, the guard, John Chase at center. And it's first and 10 now at the Dickinson Trinity 49. This is Wallander, cuts back, finds some room, struggles near the 45-yard line. He is a shifty one, Paul Wallander. And John Olderman found that out. Trying to come over from his defensive tackle position, number 71. He's the one who <laughs> let him slip by him before number 56 there, Brandon Stevenson, finally made the contact to bring him down. But a uh, little confidence here for Hazen, getting a little roll here. Pass midfield. What a great backfield tandem that is. McConnell with the power, Wallander with the quickness. They'll go to the power this time. McConnell keeping his footing inside the 40-yard line, down to the 38. And now there's a little spring in the step of the Bison offense, and the fans on the far side of the Fargo Dome have something to get fired up about. Spring in their step indeed, Steve. A little, little uh, slip away there from uh, number 32, Joe Volk. And it's another first down, McConnell just running over people. Great blocking by Ryan Smith, the guard, and Mike Schramm, the 6'4", 290-pound senior tackle. First and 10 at the 38. Give to McConnell, and this time the Titan defense is there. John Oderman ready for him that time, number 71. Six foot, one inch defensive tackle. They call him the Beast. He's the twin brother of the quarterback, Jacob Oderman. Jacob says, my brother got the size, but I got the good looks. <laughs> this Trinity defense only allowing 55 total yards a game, 42 on the ground, 13 through the air. Marshall rolling right, finds a little bit of room, but the Titans are there and good numbers, and that'll be stopped at about the 36-yard line. It'll bring up third down and about seven yards to go. 54, Nathan Carey making the stop from his linebacker position and limiting the uh, play to a one-yard gain. You see Marshall trying to hit the brakes and cut it back up, but he runs right into coverage. 54, carry and 32 in there, Joe Volk. Chad Hyde doing a nice job of playing off his block and slowing that play up. Marshall back to pass, looking near side, looking for Volk, but slotted away. A great play by Glasser. Volk had a step, the ball just hung a bit, and that gave time for Glasser to get over there and make a play. Well, they tried it on the far side of the field. Hazen did on their first play of the game. Now they try it to the near side and the same receiver. And it's the man who got the interception last time, Tyler Glosser, breaking this one up. 
So now what does Hazen do here on fourth and long? They well, the first time the Bison were confronted with a fourth down situation, they went for it, but that was fourth down and right. fourth and short. About there. two yards. This is a little beefier here, but the Bison are going to go for it. Marshall back to pass, setting up a screen near side to Wallander. He's got it. Shakes a tackle, but great pursuit by the Trinity defense turns the ball over. 54 Nathan Carey and 56 Brandon Stevenson got around that screen and snuffed that one out at the line of scrimmage. Good call if you're Hazen. You think you got the blocking there, but look at Stevenson right around the blocks. They kind of did an end around there and nobody picked those guys up. And Stevenson and Carey put the Trinity offense back on the field here, first and 10 from the 36. And so the Titans with a 13-0 first quarter lead. Odegaard, the slant to Glasser, he's got it. Into the secondary, inside the 40, down to the 35-yard line. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. Jacob Oderman fires a strike to the cutting Tyler Glasser. And the Titans are inside Hazen territory as we begin the second quarter. It's 13-0 after one in favor of Trinity. You're watching high school championship football on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. Strong hands to guide you. You're never alone with Farmers Union Insurance. Your local agent can help you develop a life insurance plan that will take care of the many financial requirements your family may face, from estate planning to education for your children to retirement income. Safe in the feeling, you're never alone. Farmers Union Insurance. Protect your family from financial uncertainty. The observance of Veterans Day this year takes on extra meaning as we continue our military action against terrorism. On November 11th, WDAY 6 News would like to not only honor those who have died serving our country in the military, but also those who died in the recent acts of terrorism. Those people have given the ultimate sacrifice in preserving our freedom. We at WDAY 6 News will continue to keep those who are currently defending us in our thoughts as we pay our respects to veterans this Veterans Day. Kelly Stone, weekday mornings on First News. The Mary Care Sports Medicine scoreboard says Dickinson Trinity 13, Hazen nothing as we begin the second quarter of play. Pat, one of the toughest plays to defend in all of football is the quick slant when it's properly executed. And we see a, an example of the speed and strength of Tyler Glosser. He carries this man about 10 yards. And I think that was uh, Nathan Falk who finally brought him down. But uh, that's just incredible. So now the Titans work right to left on your screen. Oderman cuts inside a tackler. Hit as he throws. He's got a man open. It's Steiner, but it's just overthrown. Steiner on a, just a fly route, it looked like. Had a step on the defender, but a nice job of the defensive pressure by the Hazen front four. Forced Oderman to throw maybe just a hair early. And he even had a little bit of room in front of him. Looked like he was thinking about taking it himself, but he just overshot his man who had a step or two on the defense. That was Matt Walden applying the heat. Eric Whitman, what do you have? Last break, he wants him to keep their eyes on Oderman's eyes, Jacob Oderman's eyes, because that's he thinks they're not watching him and paying attention. That's what's giving up the, the toss. Back to you guys. Oderman, option right, pitches to Steffes, shakes a tackle, shakes a couple. The ball is loose, and the Bison have it. It's Chris Marshall inside the 20. He's going to score. And the Bison have a touchdown. But there's a flag on the field, and let's see what the officials have to say. He threw the flag back at the 30-yard line. Steffes did a lot of tap dancing over there. And the Trinity fans are cheering. I could not see the number of the fella running the football back because he was running, uh, I guess, perpendicular, you'd say, to where we were at. But Chris Marshall, the quarterback, also defensive back, took it back the distance. A great run by Steffes trying to find extra yardage, but a better play by the Hazen defense to strip the football. But it looks like, Pat, we're going to have a face mask call or something like that. 
And that will bring the football back and adding insult to injury that time. It looks like the penalty will also give the Titans a first down. Boy, just when Hazen thinks it gets a break. It is a face mask call against the Hazen Bison. And let's see if we can pick it up here. That pitch was very, very late. Now the tap dancing routine comes, and it looks like number nine, was it? Walden popping the ball loose. And it was uh, number four there, Chris Marshall, the quarterback picking it up, but it's all back. Titans with new life. Fawatea crashing inside near the 10 yard line. Boy, would this game have taken a dramatic wow. turn, Pat Sweeney, if that touchdown would have counted for the Bison. Well, again, Todd Johnson said yesterday, we can't make any mistakes. And then when they thought they had a break, they make a mistake to negate the whole thing. And they could have been right back in business, possibly within five points for the two-point conversion. Instead, now Trinity has a chance to pat its 13-0 lead here from the 10. Kimball Fawatea averaging 7.3 yards a carry this year. Fantastic numbers for the senior fullback. Fake to Fawatea, Steffes walks into the end zone for a Trinity touchdown. Just like that, we go from a 13-6, maybe a 13-7 game, to a 19-0 football game. That misdirection with the fullback paying dividends. Boy, they blocked well. Just gave him plenty of room on that left side, and Steffes winds up with his third touchdown of the, ga uh, the, the game. Two 10-yarders and one 2-yarder, and they'll try for two here. <laughs> Out of the eye backfield, now Oderman throws to the end zone, caught, Joey Steiner for two. So with 10.51 to play in the second quarter, it's Dickinson Trinity 21, Hazen nothing. The first time we've really seen the Trinity Titans going to the air for the two-point conversion. Here's another look at the score. You see 54 there, Nathan Carey springing the outside block, and all Steffes had to do was just march right in there. And I asked the Trinity coaches yesterday, I mean, why has this team been so good? Why, why you know, why so dominated? What are you doing? And he said, we're not doing any, the, the assistant coaches said, we're not doing anything fancy. The guys just play solid football. They're smart kids. They're talented. You know, and they, they really haven't done anything out of the ordinary. They just get the job done, and it's 21 to nothing here with 10.51 left until halftime. Well, Todd Johnson said we have to score three times because we know that Trinity is going to score three times. Well, Trinity's done its part so far. <laughs> yeah, he said, he told us yesterday, we could, we could hold them to 21 points and still lose 21 to nothing. Well, they're already there. Randy Gordon, the former Kildare coach at his 15th year at Trinity, and Todd Johnson at age 58 has said this could be it for him. 21st year at Hazen, he says he's got 206 career wins and the kids got all of them for me. He said they're responsible. And that's good to hear the coach say that the players deserve the credit, as any coach will tell you. I always enjoy that when coaches give credit to the players. Sometimes you'll hear a coach saying, well, I've won or <laughs> I beat him three times last year. Just refreshing when the coaches take it upon themselves to give the kids the credit. As good as your material. There you go. Volk the kick. Back to get it is Swenson at his 10-yard line. Comes near side. Not much room there. Good pursuit. Jesse Kovash in on the tackle for Dickinson Trinity, and Hazen will get its third possession of the football game now at its own 23, yeah, we'll call it 24 yard line. Jesse Kovash shook off a block there. He's the cousin of former Sioux quarterback Todd Kovash, who now runs a sporting goods store in Dickinson. Hazen offense averaging 239 rushing yards a game, 92 through the air, 331 offensive yards. Coach Johnson says after we played Dickinson Trinity the first time, we realized we were too one-dimensional. It was run all the time. And if we were going to be a contender, we needed to learn how to throw the football as well. He said that game kind of showed us the light. Sean McConnell finding some light over the 30-yard line, gets it out to about the 31. 
Nice gain on first down. It'll bring up second and four. And Pat, even though the scoreboard is pretty lopsided now in favor of the Titans, you get the sense that the Hayes and Bison have got their feet underneath them now, and they're playing with a little more confidence. Well, they had a nice drive going there. Uh, they had 29 yards rushing on that last series and picked up a few first downs. And McConnell there again shows his power straight ahead running and bowling over people. And good gain on first down. Two receivers to the left side, backs in the eye. This is McConnell again, bounces off a tackle, finds some room across the 40-yard line. A first down carry out to the 43 for Sean McConnell. And now the big senior fullback is getting his looks too. I have a feeling we're going to see him a lot. <laughs> the way he's been uh, going here, why not keep giving it to him? He just bowls over number 32 there, Joe Volk, and 71, uh, John Oderman got by him. I mean, this guy just never quits. And when you can establish that fullback, it opens up so much more for the offense on play action. First down now at the Hazen 43. Marshall fakes the pitch up the middle. Pitch is now long. They're a great job to get that pitch. Now a great job to cut inside. And how did he ever get three <laughs> yards on that run? What a great play by Paul Wallander. Boy, when you cut it back, you're playing with fire, but he got away with it. Picked up. What about three yards on that play? It looks so promising, then it looks so dangerous. Look at the blocking this time by the Hazen guys on the front line. I mean, just to reel that in from behind him, and then he cuts in front of his own man, picks up a nice block there from Corey Berger, 74. Corey Berger with a great block on that play. Trinity defense now stepping up on second down and seven. McConnell not finding much room that time. And it'll bring up third down and about seven yards to go. 8.55 to play, second quarter. Nice to have you with us from the Fargo Dome today for the state AA championship game. Once we're done uh, crowning a champion here in the AA ranks, we invite you to stay with us for our AAA final between two unbeatens. What a great game that will be. Bismarck and Fargo South after the conclusion of this game. Now some movement along the line. The Hazen fans are cheering. Some jumping on either end of that Trinity defensive line. Looked like maybe the quarterback Marshall went in with a hard count. And a nice job of strategy there working on the Hazen offense. Third and two, Pat, looks a heck of a lot better than third and seven. Yes, indeed. I really didn't leave you much to say there that time, did I? That's a bad play-by-play right -play announcer thing to do. Right you are, Steve. <laughs> Wait, is that? Wait, let me read my cue card. Right you are, Steve. Thanks. <laughs> Third and two now for Hazen. Isn't that a line from Major League? <laughs> well, nobody's looking for a set of white walls here. The throw near side, actually far side, to Paul Wallander. No good. It'll bring up another fourth and two. Wasn't that the line the guy was called to ask if he wanted to manage the Indians next year? Oh, that's right. I don't know. <laughs> Can you hang on? I got a guy on the line about oh a set gosh. of white walls. What hidden talent we're well, finding today. Rich, it's really scary, actually. Rich where, Little Jr. Where this game will go, or where this brain will go. <laughs> if, this, if the score keeps going, we may hear a few more of those. Well, where will the Hazen offense go on fourth and two? Backs in a pro set. Give to McConnell, surging, working, bouncing, but stopped short of a first down by the Trinity defense. Just nothing open at the point of attack. McConnell worked and worked, gave everything he had, but there were too many Titans there, and it'll be first down Dickinson Trinity. That was the irresistible force against the immovable objects. You see Nathan Carey, number 54, making the first contact to slow him down, and he tried and tried and tried, but the Titans just finished him off, and now they get the ball in decent field position at the 49 of Trinity with 8.14 left. The Titans have enjoyed great field position through the first quarter and a half of this ball game. Now Oderman brings him to the line. Rolling left, flag thrown on the play, throwing, hit as he throws. Inside, that's Glasser to the 30-yard line, to the 29. We had a flag in the offensive backfield before that play ever got started, and I've got a sneaky feeling this one's coming back. They sent Steffes in motion and sent him deep to the left side as kind of a decoy. And caught Glosser slanting over the middle. And it was a false start on the offense. But Jacob Oderman really throws a nice football, though, Pat, and Glasser's there for the catch when called on. Yes, he is. 
<laughs> you did it again. No, if Tyler Glosser, I wanted to mention, he's the son of the now former Trinity girls basketball coach, Steve, who just resigned yesterday after a tough, tough regional Bowman upset uh, the Trinity Titans to go to state. So the Hazen defense with a reprieve on the first down penalty make it first down and 15 now for Dickinson Trinity on its own 44 yard line. 8.06 to go second quarter 21 nothing Dickinson Trinity and looking for more Oderman giving to Fawatea not much there but finds a crack gets up near the 48 yard line and he'll get back the penalty yardage make it second down at about 10. When they put Steffes in motion you have to respect that given his talent and then they wind up giving to the fullback. Fawatea, a nice cut, but he was caught from behind, and then on the side there, 76, Mike Schramm finishing him off. But he got back to the original line of scrimmage, and now it's second and 10. Our production staff doing a great job giving you an extra look at those plays here from the Fargo Dome this weekend. Looked like Nathan Lynch jumped offside on the left end of the line for Trinity. Well, what's the old saying? One step forward, two steps back. It seems like the Titans are taking one step forward and one step back. Five-yard penalty, a five-yard gain, and now another five-yard penalty. So I guess really it was one step forward, two steps back. Not that anyone five, really five cares. yards forward and five yards back again. Huh? Either way. <laughs> Bottom line, it's the second and 15 yep. now from the 44-yard line. Dickinson Trinity has scored on its first three drives. Three Kyle Steffes touchdown runs. 10 yards, 2 yards, and 12 yards. It's 21-0. Oderman faking up the middle. Thought about pitching it. Decides to keep it. Rumbles across the 50-yard line. One of the things the Bison are doing is a nice job of getting to the pitch man and forcing the quarterback to turn the ball upfield. And once again, they get back actually just a yard or so past the original line of scrimmage. Blocking just didn't develop there with uh, Nathan Lynch in front of him. He couldn't hold off the uh, tough haze in defense here. And now it's a third and long. So a, a good stand here for Hazen so far. Outside linebacker Ryan Spears doing a nice job honoring the pitch. Oderman wants to throw. He lets it go deep, and it's cut. Joey Steiner inside the 20-yard line. Wasn't sure who that pass was intended for because there were two receivers in the same spot. I was thinking the same thing. I was watching Tyler Glosser, number three, coming in from the far side, thinking, okay, this is coming his way, and all of a sudden, here comes Steiner across from the left side. I think Glosser might have broken off his route, decided to try to make something happen, but ran right into the pass pattern run by Joey Steiner. There's Steiner. And then Glosser coming in from behind, but either way, it's first and 10 for the Trinity Titans. Boy, Chris Marshall had great coverage that time, just yeah. a better throw by Oderman, and he's got some kind of arm, does Jacob Oderman. We're going to have a personal foul roughing the passer. Looks like maybe a late hit on Oderman. And now the short field gets shorter for the Bison defense. 6.43 to go, second quarter. You get the feeling if Hazen wants to mount a charge in this game, they're really going to have to turn back the Trinity offense right here. To go four scores down to this offense, the way the first half has gone, may be a hill too steep to climb. The flag was thrown way back at the uh, Trinity 45-yard line, so the official has to hustle back and retrieve it, and that's what we're waiting for. Great quickness being shown by this officiating <laughs> crew. Now we're set. So it's first and goal for the Titans on the eight yard line. Four receivers in the pattern now. Fawate the only back behind Oderman. He gets the carry. Not much there. The Bison defense stout. Mike Schramm in on the tackle. And so was number nine, Matt Walden. Well, the Bison defense needs a goal line stand here just to stay in the game. Trinity unable to penetrate there. In the Bison digging in here, second down and goal from the eight. <laughs> Oderman fakes to Fawate, and now the play opens to his left, scrambles inside the five, reaches for the goal line, but the officials will say that his knee was down at about the one and a half yard line. 
There was another case, Pat, where the fake to the fullback really opened up the play to the left side, and you can really see how the defense is sinking in now, trying to honor the fullback carry. Looks like Nathan Folk made the final stop, but certainly plenty of room with which to work there. Look at all that space in front of him. So now it's third and goal from the two. The Hazen front liners trying to deny the Titans on their fourth touchdown attempt. Pitch to Steffes, and he'll go in for his fourth score of the half. Well, if you started Kyle Steffes on your fantasy football team this week, you're in good shape. Four first half touchdowns, and now it's 27 0 Dickinson Trinity. He just follows Fawatea. Actually, Fawatea kind of missed that block, but it didn't matter as they had enough room on that left side and Steph has just charged in. I mean, it's just like watching a machine, this Trinity offense. Extra point attempt by Leffer. Up. It's good. And as you heard, it is good. Kevin Walvon with our field microphone letting us know the outcome. Now with 5.18 to play a second quarter, it's Dickinson Trinity 28, Hazen nothing. You're watching the North Dakota Double-A Championship on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. WDAY 6 News reporter Mary Jedlica travels north to the U.S.-Canadian border and talks with people who regularly cross. Yeah, the waiting lines can cost you some money. It's taken me as long as four or five hours to cross in B.C. We also visit the town of Walhalla. What changes have they seen living so close to the border? They're a little more concerned. I mean, they're asking a few more questions, checking out a few more vehicles. Living on the Edge, the U.S.-Canadian border, starting Tuesday at 10 on your news leader, WDAY 6 News. Have you checked out cha-ching.net? It's a website that's full of wonderful things, including money-saving coupons on dozens of goods and services you use every day, including places to eat, entertainment, and automotive specials. There's garage sale listings and recipes to try. Find out what's on the WDAY radio auction Saturday morning and get tips on child rearing with a click on Club Mom. And you can even list items you have to give away in the freebie section. Check it out. Cha-ching.net, the sound of savings. Look for cha-ching.net on the Inforum homepage. Kyle Steffes with the two-yard touchdown run to make it 28-0. Well, it almost looked like he was saying, hey, Fawate, get out of my way. I'm coming through there. All you've got to do is look at the scoring column today. It's Steffes, 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 and Steffes. 12 carries, 48 yards, four touchdowns. Amazing. He is a fantastic back. 9.7 yard per carry average. You don't see that very often at any level of football. 130 carries, over 1,300 yards for the season. And he has a bright football future someplace. His coach says that he has a chance to play at the Division II level. It'd be fun to see him in a uniform of one of the two area schools. Now this is Swenson taking it to the far side of the field on the kick return. Again, great speed by the Trinity pursuit, and the Bison will start at about their 23-yard line. Like Jeff Jackson, number 61, finally tracking him down there, and Todd Johnson has to be thinking, we've got to just get a score here before halftime. 5.09 left. We need a little momentum just to get, get something going into the second half, and it's a long way to go here, though, from their 23-yard line. Chris Marshall sends three receivers to the near side. Just one back, McConnell behind him, and he'll roll right and look for one of those three guys. Now throwing, oh. tipped, and almost intercepted. Joe Volk had a shot at it, but it bounced off his shoulder pads. And a couple of other guys were there. Glosser was there, number three. Had a chance for the interception, but just out of his reach. Hazen getting away with one there. Volk was... All alone, just waiting for the ball. Looked like they were trying to get it, <clears throat> excuse me, to number 40, Paul Wallander, but uh, Volk way in front of him, and Hazen got lucky on that one. Marshall give to McConnell, a short gain off the left side across the 25 to about the 26. 
Eric Whitman working the sidelines today. Eric, what do you have? Yeah, you guys, uh, during that last break, Todd Johnson challenged his guys just to simply step up and make some plays. They're not making any serious adjustments, just to step up and make some plays. Also, one other note, before the game, he was talking about how big a player Paul Wallander is, but he also mentioned the real impact of Sean McConnell. If he simply does not get going, their offense doesn't go anywhere. McConnell sets up Wallander, and that is the way their offense goes. If McConnell doesn't start playing well, or actually I should say start getting a little bit more into the offense, they're not going to be able to do much. Back to you guys. Marshall now under pressure escapes, rolling, looking, tries to get it away, but it, and he does, but it falls harmlessly out of bounds, and it'll bring up now a fourth down and eight yards to go. Marshall worked and worked, tried to find something open, but nothing was there. Tried to get a pass away and maybe just as good as anything for the Bison that this one fluttered out of bounds. Got away from John Oderman before 32. Joel Volk finally got to him. But nothing working here for uh, Hazen. Although, you know, just to touch on what Eric said as we look at the total offense, it seems that to me that McConnell has had some of the bigger Hazen gains. But obviously, uh, looking at third and long there, Todd Johnson thinking we've got to get a big game through the air. Now they punt. Tram into punt, Ooh. almost blocked, barely gets in the way. This is Glasser, gets outside, beats the Eric Swenson tackle inside the 50, inside the 45, down to the 44-yard line. And we've got a flag on the field, and not sure what the call will be. It was back where the ball was kicked away. The, the in initial indication was uh, roughing the punter. Well, there was heat on the punter as Mike Schramm got that punt away. It was almost blocked. John Oderman was the man who uh, almost hit that uh, or hit that ball coming off the foot. And it looks like the officials are huddling with the Hazen players explaining what the situation is. We've seen no preliminary signal, so we're not exactly sure what to tell you here. Now it looks like we'll get an explanation. And it indeed was a roughing the punter penalty. So Oderman, I didn't catch that. Oderman must have uh, barreled into him after the punt. Well, I should say a running into, not a roughing the kicker penalty. If it was a roughing penalty, it would have been a personal foul 15 yards and a first down. They're just calling it incidental contact, five yards, and the Bison will have to boot it away again. Under pretty good pressure again this time. It bounces inside the 35. Oh. It hits Glasser. The ball pops loose. Eric Swenson looking for the fumble recovery, but Glasser did a nice job to fall on top of the football. So it'll be first down Dickinson Trinity at its own 32-yard line when we come back. 3.51 to go second quarter. 28-0 Trinity on the Maricare Sports Medicine scoreboard. You're watching playoff football on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. In North Dakota, pride and performance go hand in hand. It's forming unspoken friendships. It's trusting neighbors, supporting community. And for 70 years, it's how Senex has been doing business in North Dakota. You'll always receive high quality, dependable, clean guard gasolines backed by the Senex performance promise. You've got our word on it. Senex Clean Guard Gasolines, where pride and performance meet. Only at your local Senex and Pride convenience store. Sweeney Cleaners, Fargo Moorhead's first choice for dry cleaning and shirt laundering. Sweeney's professionals make it worry-free and convenient with free pickup and delivery at home or office. They offer special services such as pillow restoration, alterations, and smoke and fire restorations. They're the experts when it comes to specialty items such as wedding gowns. They treat your precious keepsake as if it were their own. Stop in now at one of Sweeney's locations. They clean what the others can't. Right off 12th Avenue North behind the YWCA and at University Square Mall, Fargo. Welcome back to the Fargo Dome with 3.51 to play in the second quarter. Dickinson Trinity has a 28 to nothing lead over Hazen. No surprise that the Trinity defense is holding the opponent out of the end zone. Ten of its 11 games this year have been Trinity shutouts. Just an unbelievable season really for that Trinity defense. Belcourt the only team to score on them in the next to last regular season game. 
And that was when the reserves were in the ball game and the starters weren't too happy about it. Steffes happy about this run. He's going to score. Kyle Steffes will take it the distance for his fifth touchdown of the game. Wow. 69 yard touchdown for Kyle Steffes, number five in the half. For Steffes, number three in the quarter. And the route continues. Boy, is he shifty through the line of scrimmage. He zigged and zagged, and once he got past the defense, I mean, it was just a burst of speed, and he won the foot race. And now a chance to go up 35 zip here. Nugent. Ball uh, kicked by Leffer, no good. A nice job of getting some pressure from the right side of the punt, or the kick block formation. Ryan Spears, I believe, got a piece of that one, so it stays 34 to nothing. 169 yards already for Kyle Steffes on 13 carries, 69 of them coming on that last run. Watch it again here. The handoff, 75 with a good block. Brad Auk, 71, John Oderman. And he got by everybody. And nobody's going to catch up to him. More than 1,300 yards. It's now well over 1,400 yards, approaching 1,500 yards for the season. I think on that play, Pat, we saw all the things that make him such a great running back. No question about it. <laughs> Doesn't even look winded. <laughs> Well, he, he kind of started decelerating at about the 20-yard line because he had such a lead on the pack. Trinity is big, strong, and well-coached. So many weapons, and there you see one of the major ones, his season totals coming into this game. I mean, just to average 9, 10 yards a carry is just, at any level, you shake your head. Well, he'll be the first to tell you that the guys on the front line do a great job of right. getting those blocks, and that time they certainly did, opened up a huge hole for him. But on that play, you saw him get to the hole quickly. You saw the vision to cut back, a shifty move to make a guy miss, and then you saw the speed. And at about the 40-yard line, he took a look around because there was nobody there with him. I mean, for most guys, five touchdowns in a game would be a great game, and we're not even to halftime. For a lot of guys, five touchdowns <laughs> is a great year. Right. Volk to kick it away. Back to get it, Nathan Folk brings it to the near side of the field, but nothing there except a bunch of red-shirted guys. Nathan Carey, 54, leading the charge. Volk the kicker in on the tackle as well. Here's another look at that great touchdown. The hole opens up. There's the lane. And then just the fancy footwork, and off he goes to the races. Look, you see him there. He mentioned it's Steve looking over his shoulder one way, then the other way, and he's home free. The great ones can make that cut without slowing down. They give you just a little shake of the hips or the shoulder pads and freeze you for just that split second, and that's all they need. Great job of blocking at the point of the point of attack. Their little counter play leads to a big 69-yard touchdown run. And that that ties the Dakota Bowl record for touchdowns in a game. Either rushing, receiving, or passing. Uh, Tim Horn of Fargo North set that mark last year. Tim Horn, the quarterback, threw for five. Give now to McConnell. Bruising his way out past the 25-yard line. The Titans say the ball came loose. But the officials don't buy it. It'll be second down at about seven. I think you're right, Pat. One of the things that the Bison have been able to do today is establish McConnell. He's had some good runs, and he's really been the one bright spot on the Hazen offense. McConnell just a good power runner and it, it that may have been another uh, fumble that they missed there that was on the turf. 
So the Bison catch a break here late second quarter. Under three minutes to play now with a 34-0 Trinity lead. Marshall looking Ooh. for Folk. Probably an ill-advised pass. There was good coverage both in front of and behind the receiver. Brandon Stevenson, 56 on one side, and then Kyle Steffes, number four, on the other. Marshall trying to thread the needle there, and Hazen extremely lucky that that didn't go back for another Steffes touchdown, this time on defense. He's done everything else in this first half. Well, as, as a Hazen player now, you're trying to press a little bit just to make something good happen. See what they've got cooked up now on third down and seven. Marshall will throw again. A little double move, looking deep. Underthrown and intercepted by Joey Steiner at the 50. To the 40, to the far sideline. He's got some room and he's gonna score. It's another Trinity touchdown. Marshall looking deep for Blake Olson on a double move. But the ball was underthrown and Steiner ranges over from his safety spot and brings it back. 51 yards, we'll call it. And it's 40 to nothing. So on for the extra point now, Leffer. Trying to make it 41 to nothing. It's good. And this one is good. So the Titans add a defensive score to five rushing touchdowns. It's a 41 nothing football game. And here you see it as Steiner is looking at it. That's Steiner at the bottom of your screen, ranging over to his right. The ball underthrown, and they also had uh, number three, Glosser, there in front of the intended receiver, Blake Olson. Now all he's got to do is watch the blockers. Goes right around him. And he's home free. About a 50, 50 yard return, something like that. I think you said 51. We'll call it 50. It, I think see. he picked it off just on his side of the 50 yard line. So we'll call it 51. Well, this is exactly this is. what the Bison did not want to have happen, obviously to be down 41 nothing, but the Bison felt good coming into this game. We talked to Todd Johnson. He said, our guys really feel confident that we can beat the Trinity team. And he's had a lot of reasons to be confident about his team. They have played very well. They've had seven straight wins now since that loss early in the season to Dickinson Trinity. That was a 27 to nothing game. He says, we're much more multidimensional on offense, and we're much more confident than we were early in the season. And you think back to that uh, stage when it was 13-0 Trinity in this game, and if you're tuning in late, what happened was a Trinity fumble was taken all the way back for an apparent Hazen touchdown when all of a sudden the play was negated by a penalty. And that really was a huge blow to Hazen as you look back on it now because they would have been right back in the game and at least had a chance. Kick coming near side, bouncing around dangerously, and the Titans are going to have a shot at this football. And they've got it. I believe it was number 61, Jeff Jackson, who fell on that football. That is a live ball. You got to make a play. And the Bison were caught kind of standing around looking at it. Same thing kind of happened here to the Sioux a few years back against the Bison. Another look at it, that oblong football bounces in some crazy directions. You got to take charge out there. And yes, it was 61, Jeff Jackson falling on it. A little hesitancy on the Bison goes against him. So he's got a Dakota Bowl memory. Kimball Fawate off the right side. Eric Whitman was on the Dickinson or in the Dickinson Trinity huddle after that last touchdown. Eric, what's going on down there? Yeah, Steve. Well, Randy Gordon basically told his guys to ignore the scoreboard. There is no score in this game, even though it's tough to do at a 41 0 uh, whipping right now, if you want to say it that way. But he told his guys just to simply ignore the, the scoreboard, get out there, keep playing intense, and not let up at all. Back to you guys. Hazen's just called timeout here with 2.17 to go. 
And uh, maybe maybe they need a little time to regroup here after that uh, blown kickoff. Pat, that happens so often when a team is just a little bit on its heels, kind of gets the wind taken out of them, and then a kick comes like that and it bounces around, and it reminds me a lot of the Minnesota Vikings playoff game at New York last <laughs> Same year. Same score. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That was 34 nothing at halftime. This is something similar, but the Giants had scored, I believe it was the, the first touchdown of the game on the first drive and made it look real easy. They kicked the ball deep about the 10 yard line and a couple of Vikings players looked at each other. Nobody really looked at the football and the Giants came down and recovered it and the route was on. In case you weren't with us yesterday, the nine man championship of North Dakota football going to Strasburg Zealand 36 to eight over Maddock. And in class A, Velva Sawyer beat Harvey 27 to 22 in a game that got interesting in the late stages, but Harvey unable to pull off the onside kick. Rob Hummel was named the nine man player of the year for Strasburg Zealand. Dwight Lear of Maddock, the nine man coach of the year. Fawate off the left side, out near a first down. And in the Class A division, Andrew Fall of Harvey named the player of the year. Brad Sandy of Harvey named coach of the year. So some good consolation prizes there for Harvey. Unable to get the team prize, but they get a couple individual prizes. It will indeed be a first down for Kimball Fawate with 2.11 to go in the second quarter. Trinity has the football first and 10 on the 13 yard line of Hazen. Oderman gives to Steffes, looking for his sixth touchdown of the day. Stopped at the six yard line. Now they'll mark that closer to the seven. The blocker, oh, flag thrown now. The blocking kind of moved to the left and Steffes moved to the right. So good at working laterally, Pat, until he finds that hole, keeps his hips and shoulders square to the offensive line and moves quickly into the defensive backfield. Now we've got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty whistled on Dickinson Trinity. And that will not make Randy Gordon happy. Not so much the penalty, but those unsportsmanlike calls are preventable things, as coaches like to say, and custom field position also doesn't send a very good message. Well, the penalties haven't hurt Dickinson Trinity too much today, obviously, with a 41-0 lead here. A minute and 50 to go until halftime, but if Gordon is telling him to ignore the scoreboard, he's still coaching against those penalties. You can be sure of that. Already the Titans with 275 offensive yards, 200 on the ground, about 75 through the air. They are the real deal. It's now Steffes going in motion. Draw play delay to Fawatea inside the 20, inside the 10, to the 5, and down to the 3 yard line. Kimball Fawatea takes the delayed handoff, found all kinds of room, shook a tackler at about the 20 yard line, and he's got the Titans now first and goal at the 3. Boy, Derek Grimm saving a touchdown there. And it's just a great individual effort. He just knocks those guys over like bowling pins, all three of them. Finally, Grimm is the only one able to stop him. If Steffes doesn't hurt you, Fawatea certainly will. Oderman brings the Titans to the line. Two receivers set right. Steffes to the corner for the touchdown. And Kyle Steffes is Excellent adventure continues at the Fargo Dome. Well, you get to the point where you almost believe it's just a matter of time now with this trick, uh, this Dickinson Trinity offense. Looked similar to one he scored earlier, just crashing off to the left side of the line and finding open room there, and that's touchdown number six for Steffes. Yes, Leffer on for the extra point. It's good, and another flag is thrown. We may have a running into the kicker call this time on Hazen. That's exactly right. So Steffes now with the six touchdowns holds the Dakota Bowl record for most TDs in a game. Breaking the uh, mark set last year. He is something special, and so is this whole Trinity team. Todd Johnson really not sure what to do. There are some days when you get the dog, and there are some days when the dog gets you, as they say, and today the dog has got Hazen. 
six touchdowns. And we mentioned that the record set last year by North quarterback Tim Horn was five. And we're not even to halftime. A minute 13 left in the second quarter. You know, Hayes and coach Todd Johnson said that he told us yesterday, nobody thinks we're going to win, not even our fans. I mean, how bad is that? They came in with no pressure, but certainly uh, the odds were overwhelmingly against them the way Trinity has just dominated people all season. The previous record for rushing touchdowns in a Dakota Bowl game was four. And now Steffes with six has cemented his name in the record book that way. Most points scored in one game by one team was 44 by Watford City in 1998. So Trinity has uh, beaten that record as well. We're scrambling here to figure out what else has, uh, has gone by the boards. Well, Wade Kittleson has got the Dakota Bowl record with rushing yards, 280. And uh, Steffes is well on his way to that mark as well. That was uh, set in 97 with Velva. Jared Essler of Minot Ryan had that rushing touchdown record. Back in 1999, the fine Minot Ryan quarterback now playing defensive back at North Dakota State University. The penalty for running into the kicker assessed on the kickoff. And so North, excuse me, uh, Hazen gets it deep inside its own territory. And I believe that's Nathan Folk that'll bring it back out. Yes, it was to the 15 yard line. So with a minute to set, minute seven to go in the second quarter, we've got a We've got a whooping today, friends. 48 nothing. no other way to say it. The Hazen guys have played hard, but it just hasn't gone their way. That tough Dickinson Trinity team, so good on both sides of the football. Randy Gordon says, you know, that's the way it goes in high school. You'll get these cyclical things where one team will be so good for several years. And he said, I'm just enjoying every minute of this little run that we're on right now. Marshall brings him to the line, looking for something positive. And oh. Ball comes loose. And it's recovered inside the five. I thought I heard a whistle, though. I did, too. I don't think this is a fumble. Wow, that was but, a quick whistle if they're going to but, blow that down. I don't know if our replay will prove otherwise, but they'll uh, keep it in the hands of the Hayes and Bison. It'll go as a gain of three. I believe that was Sean McConnell on the carry from his fullback spot. Indeed, it was. We're now inside 30 seconds to play in this first half. Marshall back to pass, throws it short. Wallander can't make the grab. Trinity got some good pressure there on Marshall. Checking another record that is likely to fall today the way this one is going. Most, or excuse me, best average yards per play Minot Ryan set that record in the 94 with an average of 7.9 yards per play and the way Trinity has uh, broken some big ones today that is that is bound to be shattered as well. More than 300 offensive yards in the first half alone. Marshall looking for something nothing there that Trinity defense continues to swarm. Nathan Carey, 54. You know, on the tackle also, number 61, Jeff Jackson now getting a chance to play on the defensive side of the ball. That will bring to an end, mercifully, for the Hayes and Bies in the first half. Well, Pat, everything went right. Execution, a couple of early breaks. It's all been downhill right now for the Trinity Titans. Well, we knew Kyle Steffes was good and Today we found out just how good with six touchdowns already, including a, a 69 yarder. The only uh, scoring uh, by Trinity other than Kyle Steffes in terms of touchdowns was Joey Steiner on a 51 yard interception return. But this is just incredible and, and we've still got another half to go. It's kind of scary when you think about it. Eric Woodman is standing by with Todd Johnson. Hey guys, thank you very much. I got uh, Bison head coach Todd Johnson here and Todd, uh, you guys got a major deficit to make up here. What do you tell these guys in the second half? Well, uh, not to stop playing. We can't stop playing. We're not going to score 48 points, but I'd like to score. And uh, 
I think the game was decided early when we didn't make any tackles. I thought we played well early, didn't make tackles, game 21, and then it's over. We found our heads a little. We've got older kids that uh, I'm disappointed in that haven't made plays, but uh, we'll just have to see. I've been around a long time. I've given up 72 once, so maybe if uh, they want to keep going, they can hit 72. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Guys, back up to you. The unenviable job of interviewing a head coach whose team is down 48 nothing, and Todd Johnson nice enough to take the time. Many coaches would say, I don't have anything to say, but a classy guy, Todd Johnson. It's 48 nothing at halftime right now, Pat, and he told it like it was. That's all you can say. He did indeed. We invite you to stay tuned for our halftime show with Eric Whitman. We'll take a break right now. We'll be back with that halftime show in just a minute. It's 48 0 Dickinson Trinity on the Maricare Sports Medicine scoreboard. How would you like to lose that big belly and save big money? Now, there's the Ab Doer system, designed to aerobically burn fat as it flattens your abs in just minutes a day. And now it's yours for a fraction of the cost. In fact, we guarantee you'll lose up to two inches from your waist in just 10 days or your money back. Look, ab machines strengthen your muscles but won't reduce the size of your waist. And some exercise can actually make your ab muscles bigger. Only the Ab Doer's unique rotating torso trimmer targets your upper abs, lower abs, obliques, and lower back all in one fat-burning circular motion. You'll flatten your stomach in weeks, not months. We guarantee it. No more straining your back. The Abdur is ergonomically designed to take pressure off your spine as it massages your back. Imagine losing inches as you watch TV. Before I started using the Abdur system, I was really unhappy the way I looked. Ever since I started using the Abdur system, I started seeing immediate results and I feel so much happier and more confident in everything I do. My belly wasn't getting flat, and that was the area that I really needed to work on. So I started using the Ab Doer, and within a very short period of time, maybe about a month, I lost almost 10 pounds and two inches. This bulky machine costs up to $8,000. The Ab Doer does the work of all these machines. Millions have sold for five payments of only $29.95. But if you call now, we'll lower the price to five payments of only $19.95. That's a $50 savings. And if you order now, you'll receive the Abdur Nutritional Guide and the Abdovix Motivational Video. A $20 value, free. We guarantee you'll lose at least two inches from your waist in just 10 days or your money back. For rock-hard abs and a slim, sexy waistline, all you have to do is order the Abdur today. Call now to order the Abdur for only five payments of $19.95 plus shipping and handling and save $50. Plus, get the Abdur Guide and Motivational Video free. To have the Abdur rush to your home, use your checking account just like a credit card. Card. Just have your account number ready or use these major credit cards. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call now. Welcome back to the Dakota Bowl. Right now it is 48 to nothing Dickinson Trinity over Hazen at the half. Well, coming up after this game, the one that everybody has been talking about for the 3A championship, Bismarck versus South. One versus two, both teams undefeated. One's walking away with a loss. Right now we've got Bismarck head coach Mark Gibson. And Mark, you guys were here last year at Face North, suffered a disappointing 20-point loss. It was that part of the motivation to get back here with the kids hanging their head a little bit? Well, definitely. I mean, our seniors made a dedication to get back to where they were last year and uh, uh, we were embarrassed last year we came here you know we felt we just didn't play our best game we felt North played awfully well and uh, uh, you know they deserved to win the game but it was just a matter of we didn't we didn't think we gave very good showing and uh, you know our kids dedicated the offseason to getting back to where we uh, left off and getting back here and uh, hopefully uh, we play a heck of a lot better and uh, hopefully it's something like this score that we see right now. Last year talking with you earlier this week you said your, your team was a little bit too one-dimensional what did you guys do during the offseason to sort of switch that up? Well, the biggest thing was Mike Solway, a quarterback, has had a great year for us. He's got uh, 22 touchdowns on the season, and, uh, you know, we've mixed it up a little bit. We're throwing the ball. We've thrown the ball to Weston Dressler and Ryan Schultz. Uh, uh, the Dressler has been a, a wonderful surprise. He's a sophomore that came in from nowhere. Uh, he came from our Wachter uh, school system down in Bismarck, and, uh, you know, he's just had a heck of a year for us, and 
Uh, I think that the whole thing boils down to also is our offensive line up front's done a heck of a job for us. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to put some points up today, and we're going to have to keep their offense off the field today. You guys also have a couple of stud running backs, uh, your fullback, Elliot Piper, and then Derek Kinoshitsky as well. Talk about them. What have they meant to this offense? They've really been sort of the, the key for you guys as well, haven't they? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Elliot's an unselfish individual. I mean, Elliot's a kid that's only going to carry the ball in five to eight times a game, but he's going to lay it on the line each time because he's going to lay the big block that's going to that's going to spring Kinney. And uh, Derek is a, another unselfish kid that's, you know, last year he set the school scoring record. He could care less, you know, how many carries he's got or how many yards he's got. He just wants to win. And, and uh, uh, it's a great bunch of kids, and we're really going to miss them next year. But, uh, you know, they've paved the way for future kids to see what it takes to get here. And, you know, I'm awful proud of them no matter what happens today. Uh, you guys also have defensively and on the offensive line, Greg Esslinger. Everybody's talking about him. He's a Minnesota Golden Gopher prospect. Talk about him. How big of a player has he been, and what do you see in his future? Well, we're not going to let him graduate. <laughs> we're going to we're going to keep him around for eight more years. And uh, but he's been a wonderful young man. I mean, he's a guy that's 110 uh, percent no matter what. And you'll see that today on both sides of football. And uh, you know, he's always got a mission. And uh, you know, he's just a he's just a hardworking individual. I mean, he's a kid that's going to we run wind sprints. He's a kid that sticks around, and runs more. And uh, you don't get too many more. You don't get too many of those kids. And uh, you know, I just hope today that we have a good showing for those kids. And uh, the bottom line is, you know, uh, I know South's got an awful dynamite class too, and so it's going to be two uh, classes that ever since they were sophomores, vision being where they're at right now. When you look at this game, one versus two, the hype surrounding it, this game probably is going to be like the one we see today. Probably be a little bit more low scoring, possibly. Uh, talking with you earlier this week, you think it's going to come down to special plays. Do you still have that feeling? Yeah, I think uh, mistakes is the biggest key. I think the one thing, though, when you get here, is a snowball effect. You know, when th something goes bad, you don't want it to snowball and keep going bad on you. I mean, the thing, you got to keep a level head, and, you know, if they get up by one or two, don't panic. And I think you're seeing a little bit of this right now is when the snowball just hits, it just keeps going, you start making more mistakes, and another team gets momentum, and they just bury you. And, uh, you know, it happened to us last year, and, and hopefully that experience is going to help us out, and, uh, you know, I hope for a good showing today. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Mark thank Gibson, you. head coach with Bismarck Demons. His Demons playing the 3A championship coming up uh, about 25 minutes after this game. Stay tuned. We'll have more from halftime at the Dakota Bowl where Dickinson Trinity leads it 48-0 at the half right here on WDAY, DAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. Do you suffer from low back or hip pain morning after morning? Medical experts agree a pillow between your legs could be the best solution, but what a hassle. Too big, goes flat. Introducing the Contour Leg Pillow to give you relief without the hassle. Look, no leg support can put strain on the hips, knees, and pushes your lower back out of alignment. But the Contour Leg Pillow comfortably supports restoring natural alignment. Relax back muscles, relieve strain on hips, knees, and joints. The curve fits your legs so it comfortably stays with you all night. I've tried many other products in the past, and I was skeptical about this one at first. But it really does work. I used to have constant back pain. I was uncomfortable standing, sitting, even lying down. But since I started using the contour leg pillow, my back pain has greatly improved. I used to suffer from tremendous lower back pain. The first night that I use the contour leg pillow, the pain is gone. It's amazing. Thousands of leg pillows have been sold for $19.95, but now you can get all night lower back, hip, and knee comfort with a contour leg pillow for only $14.95. But wait, there's more. If you order now, we'll also include the world-famous contour pillow to help relieve those tired, achy upper back and neck muscles for all night comfort and support. Millions of contour pillows have been sold for $19.95, but if you order now, We'll include it free. This is a spectacular $40 head-to-toe comfort value for just $14.95. Now, get complete comfort and support from your head, neck, and shoulders all the way to your low back, hips, and knees for just $14.95. But don't wait. This offer won't last long, so call right now. We accept these major credit cards and we'll even accept your personal check over the phone, just like a credit card. Call 1-800-644-9933 to order the leg pillow and get the contour pillow free. Call 1-800-644-9933. That's 1-800-644-9933. Welcome back to the Fargo Dome. It's 48 to nothing in favor of Dickinson Trinity at halftime. And 
As that score indicates, really everything has gone the way of the Titans here in the first half. They open the scoring with 7-16 to play in the first quarter. Kyle Steffes on a 10-yard touchdown run. The point after made it 7-0 in favor of Trinity. Later in the first quarter, 4.35 to play. It's Steffes with his second rushing touchdown of the game. This one from two yards out. Point after no good, it was 13-0. With 10.51 to play in the second quarter, Steffes goes in from 10 yards. The two-point pass to Joey Steiner made it 21 to nothing. 5.18 to play. It was a two-yard run by Steffes, his fourth of the game, 28 nothing. Then the big one, the 69-yarder. Point after no good made it 34 to nothing. That was Steffes' fifth touchdown of the game, tied a Dakota Bowl record for touchdowns, set a Dakota Bowl record for rushing touchdowns. The Titan defense scored with five minutes to play in the second quarter. Joey Steiner takes a pass back 51 yards for the interception return. Point after was good. It was 41 to nothing. And Steffes capped off the first half scoring with a three-yard touchdown run, 48 nothing after the extra point. There you see it, Pat. Just some amazing numbers. 123 yards on 15 carries. And for the game, Dickinson Trinity with 233 rushing yards on 31 carries. That is an average of seven and a half yards a carry. Turnovers have really hurt yeah. Hazen a couple of times that looked like they had something going. The ball was turned over. And then a fumble that was returned for a touchdown by Hazen was called back on a face mask penalty. So turnovers, I guess, in many different ways uh, have been an insult, a slap in the face to the Hazen Bison today. Talking about Dakota Bowl records, Trinity's 48 first half points is a Dakota Bowl record. The record for two teams is 72. And uh, Todd Johnson said that he's given up 72. And, if Dickens and Trinity can score 72 points, that will be a scoring record for both teams, and the Titans may be able to do it on their own. The 233 rushing yards well on the way to a Dakota Bowl record. 364 is a record by Fargo South. Total offensive yards, 489 is the Dakota Bowl record. Right now, Trinity has 302. They're, they have had seven penalties for 49 yards, have the Titans, but uh, really you're sweating... Uh, very small details at this point by being concerned with those penalties. Hazen's been able to do a few good things, Pat, but just haven't been able to establish a consistent offensive attack. Really, the Sean McConnell factor has been the only thing working well for the Bison. McConnell has gained 48 yards on 12 carries. Not a bad first half under any other circumstance. We'll expand some good memories to take home from this Dakota Bowl game. And if this is Todd Johnson's last game as Hazen coach, that's certainly what you're hoping for is to just send him out on a positive note if indeed this is the end. Volk will kick it off and Volk will wait for it to come down, take it on a hop at his 17 yard line. And a nice tackle on the far side. That time it was Brandon Stevenson making the tackle at about the 22 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Hazen. I was worried there for a second that Falk was going to watch that one bounce, but not after the last time, which uh, wound up uh, going the other way for a Trinity touchdown. So a lot of running, but uh, Hazen gets out to the 22-yard line and will start the third quarter from there. Chris Marshall starting the third quarter as he did the first quarter for the Bison defense, for the Bison offense, excuse me. This is Wallander off the left side, fighting hard for about two yards. Wallander just a sophomore, a real agile kid. They expect him to get even better the next two years, 5'8", 170 pounder. Todd Johnson says he's gonna be phenomenal. He can run over people and we saw a little bit of his hard nosed action there. Good hands. For a sophomore in high school to have that blend of speed and size, it is very uncommon. You see that oftentimes with junior and senior athletes, but for someone that young to have all those tools, it is scary. He is a great player. Sean McConnell with the carry up the middle. Not much there, maybe a yard. Number 44 in on the tackle, that's Kimball Fawatea for Dickinson Trinity. Both teams going with their starting lineups here to begin the third quarter. And both teams senior dominated. 13 for Hazen, 12 of them start, 15 for Dickinson Trinity. Marshall will give it to Wallander, cuts back across the 25, looking for some open field. Now at the 35, and hey, Paul Wallander's got something going for the Bison offense. Near the 50-yard line before he's finally tackled by Kyle Steffes. 
biggest offensive play of the day for the Bison O. And that gets the Hazen fans up on their feet cheering on the far side. Didn't matter which way he was going, he found room wherever he turned. Boy, you can see the talent that this young man has. Watch how far he runs on this play. Picks up that block from McConnell, but cuts it back the other way. Breaks a tackle there. Back to action. McConnell off the right side. Not much that time. Volk, the linebacker in on the tackle. Also number 71, John Oderman. And that's, that's what you have to look for if you're Hayes in here. Just those little things, the little victories here in the second half. And get that uh, sophomore a little more seasoning here for next season. And it'll be second and nine now from the Dickinson Trinity 49. 9.42 to play in the third quarter. It's 48-0 Dickinson Trinity. Marshall throwing deep, looking for Swenson, and it's almost intercepted. Steiner back there on the coverage. Kyle Steffeson on the play as well. It'll be third down and nine, and we've got a flag back where the ball was thrown, and we'll have a personal foul roughing the passer. Looked like a little bit of a late hit on Chris Marshall. Well, we called uh, Steiner and Steffes' names a lot uh, on that defensive backfield today, Steve. And Dickinson Trinity almost winding up with another uh, pickoff there as that ball was underthrown. So Usually when the Hayes. quarterback, excuse me, Pat. So a break for Hazen. We were talking about getting those little victories and little things to cheer about here after the electrifying run by Wallander. They catch a break here on the uh, penalty. But a uh, little dangerous play there. Usually when the quarterback throws the football, you have about one step as a defender in which you can put a hit on the quarterback. If you take two steps and hit him after the ball is gone, it will most times be whistled as a personal foul, and it was that time. Wallander coming to the near side, not much there. Good job by the right side of that Dickinson Trinity defense. Fawatea in the middle, Oderman, one of the other defensive tackles. Chad Height, 52, also involved. No gain. Bison now trying to rotate some offensive linemen here, and not everybody was on the same page there. But now we're set to go. Order has been restored. It'll be second and 10. Quick hitter to McConnell inside the 30-yard line, fighting his way to about the 28. Boy, when Sean McConnell gets ahead of steam, he is a tough man to slow down. He's been at his best today when he just goes right up the gut. And you'll see the alley develop for him. 70, John Chase, 54, John Walsvik opening the hole for him, putting uh, Hazen in a third and short situation. So with a little momentum here, I think Hazen's main, uh, oh, now we got a flag thrown before the, uh, ball was even snapped. We've had no shortage of penalty markers today. Thrown in the defensive backfield. Somebody must have said something on sportsman like Gonda. Yeah, as the two teams were breaking the huddles, the flag came in from the back judge. The official is <laughs> talking with number 19, Joey Steiner. Not exactly sure what happened on that play. But we talked about breaks, and another one goes Hazen's way right now. And you know, as much as this Trinity team enjoys the 48-0 lead, you know those defensive guys want to hold Hazen out of the end zone. And sure. those two penalties have certainly put their backs a little further against the wall. So now the Bison with their deepest penetration of the day inside the 20-yard line. Marshall fakes the give to the fullback, rolling, looking, running, and thrown out of bounds. A nice play by Chad Height. Good pursuit to the boundary, slung him out of bounds. And Marshall's receivers were well covered in the end zone. You see Steffes back there on Nathan Falk. And Marshall really had no choice. He didn't want to turn that one over. And a Dickinson Trinity player getting attention on the far side of the field. It's about the only thing that could mar this game for Dickinson Trinity would be an injury to one of its players. And none of us want to see that no matter what side you're pulling for today. 7.42 to play third quarter. 
Nice to have you with us from the Fargo Dome today for this double-A championship game. While there's a timeout on the field, we'll take a timeout ourselves. 48-0 Dickinson Trinity on the Medicare Sports Medicine scoreboard. You're watching the double-A final on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. Well, I was eight years old when I started racing motocross. Flat out as fast as you can go for two hours. I don't even really think that I have it. It refers to the prosthesis Hermanson wears. I'm thinking in a couple years I'm going to try and get some more sponsors and then go up to like sprint cars or modifieds or something, something bigger. And to know that everybody else is there, and, you know, and they're with you and they're all feeling your pain. The observance of Veterans Day this year takes on extra meaning as we continue our military action against terrorism. On November 11th, WDAY 6 News would like to not only honor those who have died serving our country in the military, but also those who died in the recent acts of terrorism. Those people have given the ultimate sacrifice in preserving our freedom. We at WDAY 6 News will continue to keep those who are currently defending us in our thoughts as we pay our respects to veterans this Veterans Day. The injured player for Dickinson Trinity, number 52, Chad Height, and we can only hope that just kind of a funny twisting sort of injury and that there's nothing serious there. Not putting any weight on that right leg. He, as he threw Chris Marshall out of bounds on that last play, was kind of being twisted around. Looked like maybe you planted a little bit strange oh, on that oh, right oh. leg. That time, Marshall tries to turn it upfield. Volk and Oderman say nothing doing, Mr. Marshall. And it will be third down and about 15 yards to go. Boy, Hazen got down to the 15-yard line, and it's been to the rear march since then. Big hit there by Oderman. And in height, uh, Dickinson Trinity loses a two-way starter. He was their center and their uh, starting defensive end. So Todd Johnson reaches into his bag of tricks on third and 15, looking for a first down, looking for maybe a touchdown. Under pressure, dumps it off to Wallander, tries to make a move. And he made that move, but tripped himself up on the play. And number 56, Brandon Stevenson, was there to help out. John Oderman came in and nailed the quarterback, Marshall. And Oderman, 71, is coming off the field. He was shaken up a little bit in that collision. I'm not sure if he maybe took a Took a foot to the groin there in that uh, head-on collision or what, but uh, I think he's just coming off to shake it off. But he forced that play. Wallander that time making his move planted and looked like kind of an awkward move there as he tried to get himself going back upfield. And on this artificial turf, we love it on days like today when you're doing games well. We don't love it on days like today. Normally in November, you like to play inside on the artificial turf from a selfish perspective on the TV side of things. You're not raining on cameras and whatever else might happen this time of year, but you see a lot of odd looking injuries happen on this artificial service. Marshall looking to the end zone, looking for Blake Olson, but it's overthrown. And the ball will go over. That was a fourth down play. Excuse me, fourth down play. Yep. Just a quick toss to the corner. And why not go for it on yeah. fourth down? Just not able to get there was uh, Blake Olson, the junior. Not so. only can Kyle Steffes carry the ball, he can prevent other guys from getting it too. Great pass coverage on that play. So Hazen comes up empty after its deepest penetration of the day. And you see the contrast there with penalty yards. Fawatea up the middle for about five yards on first down. I don't know if we can take that, take a look at that stat again. Penalty yards, there it is. Penalty yards for Trinity, 78, as opposed to 90 total offensive yards for the Hazen team. So Trinity has lost almost as many as Hazen has gained. Sean McConnell and Adam Gaglian on the tackle on that last play. Call it a gain of five, second down and five. 5.41 to go here, third quarter. 48-0 Dickinson Trinity. They are looking for their 24th consecutive win. Now into the ball game, number 44. That's Kimball, well, excuse me, Kimball Fawate. He's been in the whole football game. For some reason, it seemed like a different number to me, but that's a young man who's done a lot of damage here for the 
Dickinson Trinity team. Carries for first down yardage out near the 40 yard line. He'll mark it just outside the 38. It'll be another first down carry. Well, the way he's running, he looked as fresh as he did in the first quarter. That's what you mean. Brandon Stevenson. That, that's what I meant. That, yeah. Thing. Brandon Stevenson helping spring him there on the line. Check in with Eric Whitman after this next play. Fawate off the left side. Another good gain. This one good for about seven out to the 46. Eric Whitman, what do you have? Yeah, guys, uh, just uh, looking at the, talking to the trainers about Chad Height. Not really sure what happened. He simply planted, twisted his knee, it popped. He injured his knee as a freshman had surgery on it. They think maybe something along those same lines. Uh, he is done for the game, but uh, not no official word yet, but he is done for the game. Back to you guys. Thank you, Eric. Fawatea now over 100 yards on the ground. 14 carries for a buck six. And yet another penalty flag is thrown. That one coming from the side, Judge. A lot of times you'll see that whistled as an offsides on the defense, and that is the call. Someone may have lined up with the crown of his helmet over the football. Randy Gordon there, the man in black. 15th year at Trinity looking for back to back titles. Call it second down and eight yards to go. Oderman will throw out to the far side looking for number 24, Dustin Rising. But it bounces short. And it'll be third down in about eight. This, of course, is not. This, of course, is not the only state tournament going on in North Dakota. The state swimming and diving championships going on up in Bismarck and, excuse me, up in Grand Forks. Also in Grand Forks at the Alaris Center, the Class A girls basketball tournament. Last night, Mandan, Dickinson, Minot, and Fargo North won their games. It'll be Minot against Fargo North in the championship tonight. Two teams that a lot of people wanted to see play for the state championship. This is Kyle Steffes off the left side, out to the 44. I don't, I don't mean to correct you, Steve, but just in case anyone's going there tonight, it's at, at the new Engelstead Arena. At the new Engelstead, it, it was, I'm sorry. It was, yes. it was supposed to be at the Alaris Center originally, and uh, that did not work out, so they, they are holding it. It's the first basketball event, actually, in the new Ralph Engelstead Arena. Thank you for making that correction. I just don't want anybody to go to the Alaris Center tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's nobody playing basketball here. Those liars on TV. <laughs> Yes, of course, the Grand Forks area home now to two of the state's newest premier buildings. The Engelstead Arena, $100 million plus price tag, and it is impressive. Punt away now by Chad Height, excuse me, by... Well, I'll be honest with you, I missed the number on the fellow punting the football. It's down at the 15-yard line. That's where Hazen will take over with 3.02 to play in the third quarter. It's 48-0 Dickinson Trinity. You're watching the North Dakota State AA Championship game on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. Strong hands to guide you. You're never alone with Farmers Union Insurance. Your local agent can help you develop a life insurance plan that will take care of the many financial requirements your family may face, from estate planning to education for your children to retirement income. Safe in the feeling, you're never alone. Farmers Union Insurance. Protect your family from financial uncertainty. In North Dakota, pride and performance go hand in hand. It's forming unspoken friendships. It's trusting neighbors, supporting community. And for 70 years, it's how Senex has been doing business in North Dakota. You'll always receive high quality, dependable, clean guard gasolines backed by the Senex performance promise. You've got our word on it. Senex clean guard gasolines, where pride and performance meet. Only at your local Senex and Pride convenience store. Kelly Stone, weekday mornings on First News. The Mary Care Sports Medicine scoreboard says 48-0 Dickinson Trinity with 3.02 to play in the third quarter. Joey Steiner, the Dickinson Trinity punter that time. Only the ninth Trinity punt of the season, by the way. So Chris Marshall brings me to the line. First and 10 on the 15. Option left, but nothing doing. The Titans were there with a whole bunch of guys. In on that play, Volk, number 73, also in on the play, Brent Marshbecker. 
Trinity defense doing such a great job pursuing to the football. You hardly ever see one guy making a tackle anywhere near the line of scrimmage. It's always several guys. Lots of red shirts. The Titans are aptly named the way they have been ruling class double-A football. Give now out McConnell. Big yardage off the left side. Across the 20 out near first down yardage. It'll be marked just short. It'll be a third down and about a yard to go. McConnell continues to be the uh, most effective Bison offensive weapon. Nice job clearing the hole in front of him there by Adam Geigley and John Walsvik, 55 and 54 respectively. We should mention also speaking of the girls class A basketball tournament that Jamestown and Red River will play in the third place game tonight. Both the Blue Jays and the Rough Riders have had very good playoff runs. Marshall, they give up the middle. Believe that was McConnell again. We saw some. Indeed it was. We saw some father and son uh, combinations uh, yesterday uh, with Harvey. Brad Sandy coaching his son. The quarterback and Chris Marshall here, the Hazen quarterback. His dad, Joel, coaches junior high football at Hazen. Chris, a second team All-Stater last year as a D-back. Todd Johnson put him at quarterback last year because of his athleticism. Everybody else thought he'd be an I-back. Number 10 for Hazen, Derek Grimm now into the game, lining up on the left side as a receiver. Up the middle goes McConnell, and Joe Volk is there to meet him in the hole and drive him backwards. You can hear that hit from here. There's still some pretty good intensity going on in the trenches here today, even though we're late in the third quarter in a fairly lopsided ball game. The Titans obeying orders from Randy Gordon to ignore that scoreboard, and the hits are just as heavy as it would be in a scoreless game as some of the Hazen players take a rest here as Sean McConnell takes a well-deserved rest. He's taken quite a few pops here after that long game. He's really been the bright spot today for the Hazen team. Number 42 in for the end of the ball game now, Casey Krause at fullback. Throwing his Marshall, overshooting the intended receiver. Ryan Spears looking for the football, but good coverage there by Glasser, number three, and number 31 for Trinity, Matt Hurst. They had three receivers to the right there as a decoy and tried to float it into uh, the receiver Spears, unable to do so. Casey Krause, you mentioned there, uh, Steve, he's the brother of Lenny Krause, the tailback mm -hmm. on Hazen's state championship team of 1996, that team that just literally ran over people. Played at Concordia College for Sorry. Jim Christofferson. Now Terry Horan is leading the Concordia program, longtime Breckenridge coach. Marshall pitching as he falls. Wallander with a head of steam to the outside across the 30-yard line. Shoved out of bounds at the 32. Nice athletic play by Marshall to get that pitch away. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. Third quarter moving along here this afternoon at the Fargo Dome. We've got 12 minutes to play in the North Dakota AA Final. Dickinson Trinity carries a 48-0 lead into the fourth quarter. You're watching the AA Championship on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. You've asked for it, and it's coming in time for Christmas. Hi, I'm Lynn Nichols. For the past couple of years, you've been enjoying the recipes that we've been making on What's Cooking on WDAY News at 5. Now, I'm proud to say the first What's Cooking cookbook is on its way. Over 500 What's Cooking recipes are now available in one great book. To pre-order your copy, fill out the order form in the Sunday or Wednesday forum. Or send check or money order for $15 plus $5 shipping and handling to What's Cooking Cookbook. P.O. Box 2466, Fargo, North Dakota, 58108. To order by credit card, call 701-237-6500, Monday through Friday, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Please allow three to four weeks for delivery. Part of each book's proceeds will be donated to the Stand Down program, dedicated to helping local homeless veterans. We've got one quarter to play here from the Fargo Dome. 
It's 48-0 Dickinson Trinity leading Hazen on the Meritcare Sports Medicine scoreboard. And Hazen can say they shut Trinity out in the third quarter. Absolutely, they did. <laughs> well, you start to talk, and we had mentioned it a little while ago about some of the great teams, and I've been in the area now for, I guess, about five years or so, and it's interesting to compare the different teams you see at different divisions. And I remember the West Fargo Packers of a couple of years ago had that great run in AAA where they won consecutive state championships and posted back-to-back -back undefeated seasons. And now Dickinson Trinity is 12 minutes away from doing the same thing. And those uh, two awfully good football programs, and people will talk about this team here, the Dickinson Trinity Titans, for a long time. They'll say, oh, those great teams in 2000 and 2001. Marshall now a little reverse. Oh, some trickery. Grimm will throw, and he will complete it. Nathan Folk outside the 40-yard line. How about that? A little fourth-quarter razzle-dazzle. Well, we were at the sports bubble last night to watch Hayes in practice, and they were working on that play. And, you know, when you're down 48 nothing to start the fourth quarter, why not? Absolutely. Humor <laughs> yourself, if nothing else. <laughs> Grimm. Connecting there with Nathan Falk, and uh, don't be surprised if we see Matt Walden, number nine, throw one later in this game because he was taking a turn uh, last night as well as we see the injured Trinity player, Kimball Fawatea. Inside handoff, Marshall giving it to number 42, Casey Krause. And he surges out for a gain of about a yard. Randy Gordon says, this is a team that I don't ever really worry about. There's so much senior leadership on this squad, and they are so focused to go out and win football games. He says, our guys just love to play football. I don't worry too much about them looking past somebody because they just enjoy playing the game of football so much. Doesn't matter if the other team is really good or, or not really good. It's just fun for them to go out and play the game. And I think it says something there the, on the pass play. We had a little razzle-dazzle play, and it worked for about a 15-yard gain. When you see those uh, unorthodox kind of plays work, most of the time they go for big gains. But the Trinity defense so schooled, so solid defensively, that they held it to a modest gain. Now coming out of the game, a couple of the Dickinson Trinity starters. Marsh Becker coming out, Volk number 32, along with Kyle Steffes giving some of the younger Titans a chance to play, and I'm sure we will hear lots from this Dickinson Trinity team again next year. They'll graduate a lot of great seniors, but they've learned some great lessons. Throwback pass looking for Marshall, and it's intercepted. I believe it was Brandon Stevenson. And Wallander looking for the throwback pass to Chris Marshall, but is picked off by Stevenson. Brandon Stevenson, the junior linebacker, getting the... Uh, Fourth turnover of the game for the Trinity Titans. Well, they got away with one in the bag of tricks, but that one went uh, the opposite way. And now Trinity, we'll see if they uh, make some substitutions here. They, they had some of their defensive players come out, but it looks like Steffes is out there now. Let's send it down to our sideline reporter, Eric Widman. Eric. Thanks, guys. Uh, Titans trainers right now are working on Kimball Fawatea. And it looks like he sprained his right knee, according to them. Right now, they're not sure whether or not he's going to be going back into the game. You'd think probably not with the score the way it is, but you never know. Back to you guys. Fawatea, a senior, and a penalty here against Trinity. Near sideline is starting to fill up here with Fargo South fans as we await the triple-A game between Fargo South and Bismarck to follow this one and we'll have it for you right here. False start penalty on Dickinson Trinity will make it first down and 15 yards to go. Fawate getting some ice on that right knee. Nine fifty nine to go here fourth quarter give to Kyle Steffa still in the ball game for Trinity look at him weaving his way through the Hazen defense. He's still got some gas left in the tank down to the forty five yard line that was one of the prettiest seven yard runs you'll ever see. He just shook off a couple of bison big block there to the left of your screen. 
And just the, the great footwork by Steffes to, to make the quick cuts and make something out of nothing. And some more substitutions here for Dickinson Trinity as uh, Jacob Oderman comes out. And they've got a new quarterback here, Brady Ernst. Yes, Kyle Steffes also out now. The Titans substituting pretty freely on offense. Give up the middle, number 22, with Jaden Nelson to the outside, to the 20 yard line, and down to the 19. So Jaden Nelson brings a calling card on his first carry in this Dakota Bowl. Well, it's time for the juniors to grow some whiskers, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. It'll be their team next year. Jaden Nelson, nobody around him. Tried to stiff arm the guy there, it didn't work, but. Nathan Falk finally staying with it and bringing him down, but a really nice gain. And now Trinity in business at the 20 with the reserves in. 8.58 to go now. Another penalty flag thrown. Weston Vetter in there, a tailback for Trinity, number nine. Penalty against the Dickinson Trinity offense will back them up five yards. Bring up a first down and, and 15. Oh. I am unfamiliar with the uh, indication the referee is giving us. That signal hands on hips is usually offsides on the defense. When there's a false start or a legal shift, it's a different signal, but it was some sort of offense did something wrong penalty. We know that much anyway. And a gain of two yards now. Carrying the ball, I believe number nine for Dickinson Trinity, Weston Better. Got a chance to visit with uh, some of the Trinity folks last night. Got I haven't uh, seen Ken Keller, the athletic director at Trinity, since I worked there in Dickinson back in 1981 and 82 and uh, great to see Kenny again. Look at the rushing totals. Trinity approaching 300 here to Hazen's 110. Fake give now throwing as Ernst. Near side looking for Nathan Fisher. But the ball bounces off his hands incomplete and now do we have a penalty keeping, flag? Yes, yes. keeping with the tradition <laughs> that has been established in this game. <laughs> What's the Dakota Bowl record for penalties? <laughs> Do they even have that stat here? I don't know. Well, we have to be sniffing it <laughs> if there is one. Well, obviously there is one. Whether or not anyone's uh, kept track or cares is a different thing altogether. Yeah, legal motion and holding on Trinity. You know, Trinity just, uh, you, you wouldn't know it from looking at the score. They had a little trouble getting to Fargo yesterday. The bus broke down in Valley City. And uh, most of the team kind of came in late Friday evening. They had some players and coaches in a van that uh, beat that bus into Fargo. They were kind of sitting around the lobby last night of one of the local motels waiting for uh, the rest of the group to arrive. But uh, that even that hasn't stopped the Trinity Titans today. After the officiating matters have been sorted out, we'll have a second down and 13 yards to go from the 23-yard line of Hazen. Glad to have you with us today from the Fargo Dome in Fargo, North Dakota. This tournament, or this the championship games, I should say, will shift up to Grand Forks to the Alera Center next year. It will be in the Alera Center, yes. They will not play those at <laughs> Engelstead Arena. That would be a story. Unless they play arena football, maybe. And there's actually been some talk. I haven't heard any lately, but there was some talk about a year ago about a possible arena football team going in Engelstead Arena. I don't know. I think we have enough diversions in the winter. Well, they've got all the amenities up there. You can do just about anything that you can do in a building that size at the new Engelstead Arena. Fourth down now and five yards to go. Up the middle and nothing doing for Jaden Nelson. There's something the Hazen defense can be proud of. A fourth down stop for about minus two yards. Turning the ball back over to the offense. John Myra, 52. Watch him get in there and shake off a block and put a grinding halt to that play. Well, the Bison are not going to be able to look back and 
have a whole lot to smile about at this game, but Randy Gordon, I thought, said it well at halftime. Sometimes things just snowball, and they certainly did today in the first half. A couple of breaks that could have gone their way did not. And of course, there was that great Dickinson Trinity team on the other side of the football all during that first half. One of the best double-A teams we remember seeing in a long time. The Hayes and Bison will take a timeout. We will do the same with 6.45 to play. It's 48-0 Dickinson Trinity. You're watching playoff football on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. Vern Halter dreams big. He wants to win the Iditarod, Alaska's last great race. He knows the right equipment, hard work, and a well-trained team of dogs are bringing that dream closer all the time. You have dreams too, and Wells Fargo wants to help you reach them. Each year, we award Wells Fargo Community Fund scholarships to students like you, who'll be attending colleges or universities in their home state. So if college is something you've dreamed about, let Wells Fargo help bring your dreams a little closer. Pick up a scholarship application today at your local Wells Fargo store and dream big. Back to live action here at the Fargo Dome. Dustin Bosch in at quarterback for Hazen. Pitches to Paul Wallander and... What would an offensive play be without a penalty? <laughs> so, looked like a first down gain out to the 29 yard line. A flag comes in at the end of the run. Face mask. Face mask well, penalty, Pat. Yeah. Yes, thank we you. Were, uh, missed the initial signal there. We were uh, on schedule here. Maybe the refs are trying to get us. Uh, Oh, I don't mean to pick. Well, up. they're in a tough spot, too. They still have to call the football right. game. It just gets frustrating when, really, to be honest with you, just about everybody would like this football game to be done about now, and maybe that's including what, the Hayes and Bison. I right. don't know. You know, Roger Thomas used to yell at those officials, don't stop officiating in the fourth quarter, and these guys aren't, so let's, let's hear it for our that's officiating right. crew. They're getting paid by the game. That's right. Although if they were getting paid by the call today, they'd be wealthy men at the end of this one. <laughs> Carry out to the 35-yard line. Dustin Bosch, a junior, 6'1", 170-pound quarterback and a linebacker. Getting a chance to play in the Dakota Bowl and making some memories for himself here in the final six minutes. Rolling right, oh, the pitch, Bosch to Wall Wallander, excuse me. And it looked like the Trinity defense had a copy of the Hazen playbook that time because there was a whole bunch of guys there leading the charge, number 88, Brent Kovash. Eric Widman is down on the sidelines checking things out. Eric, what's happening down Yeah, there? guys, during that last break, Todd Johnson obviously knows the game's over, but he's challenging guys. Dickinson Trinity has only given up one touchdown. He would like to see his Bison make it a second. He knows the game's over, but at least to get that moral victory. Back to you guys. Todd Johnson says that our seniors from the seventh grade on have never beaten Dickinson Trinity. They got two chances this year, and that will be one regret for those young men that they weren't able to top that Trinity team. They tied them in junior high, but have never been able to beat them. You know, one guy we haven't seen much of uh, today from Hazen is Matt Walden, the senior tight end and inside linebacker. And I don't know if he's injured. He's on the sidelines over there standing up. He's had some foot problems in his career, had a couple of surgeries. This was his first full year of football since junior high. Good athlete. Back to pass now. Bosch looking for something near side, looking for Eric Swenson. But on the coverage, see if we can pick up the number, number 21, that was Nathan Fisher. Boy, he had an interception in his hands. And Fisher is a senior, and he was all set to go in and put the capper on this. Maybe he was looking, uh, had his thoughts on the end zone before he caught that ball, huh? 
Uh, another what if. That the, just a, one of the few what ifs for the Trinity Titans. Yes, that fourth down incompletion will give the ball back to the Titan offense. Leading the Titans right now, Brady Ernst, six foot, 170 pound junior quarterback. The tailback, number nine, is Weston Better, and the lead blocker is Jaden Nelson in that I formation. Come on, Better! And this is Better now to the outside, inside the 35 yard line. Tackled at the 33. Adam Geigley, a senior defensive lineman, making that stop. And now the Bison will send in a few defensive replacements. Out will come Swenson. Out will come number 52, John Myra. And I think three guys went into the huddle, so they're going to need to bring three guys off. And there, go Bla there goes Blake Olson. Inside four minutes to play now. 48-0 Dickinson Trinity. Capping off a magical season with a magical first half here today. And really been on cruise control, have the Titans. And there is the ceremonial dumping of the Gatorade bucket. Randy Gordon got it. He got all of it. Oh, boy. And he's so glad that he's indoors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although today in the Fargo area, it's supposed to be around mid-50s. So this would probably would have been a good outdoor yeah, day for football. Yeah, it would have been a yep. good outside day for football. But you don't know that back in June oh, yeah. or whenever you're planning these games. Pitching now, this is better inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Nice shoestring tackle there by Paul Wallander. Playing on defense as a sophomore as well as playing some running back for the Hayes and Bison. Dickinson Trinity last year beat Wapiton, a triple-A team, and Randy Gordon says, when we were able to beat the Huskies, we knew that we had something good going. And I don't know that it, he knew at that point that 23 wins later, or whatever the exact number ends up to be, this team would be where it is right now. But they have enjoyed some sort of a run. Got another new quarterback in for uh, Trinity, no, wearing number 80. You don't see too many quarterbacks wearing 80. Lee Kedrowski, a sophomore. Why not? For a lot of these guys, you know it's a memory of a lifetime just to be able to play in a building like this in front of so many people. See Fawatea and Steffes and all of the Titans down there on the sidelines here. On the near side at the Fargo Dome getting ready to celebrate another unbeaten season and another state title here in two and a half minutes. Fourth down and nine yards to go. A little movement along the line of scrimmage. An offsides penalty. Well, we may have 50 penalties. We may have as many penalties as points scored here today by the time this one's all said and done. You get that a lot of times in late games where it's been so one-sided and the concentration is... What's this here, Steve? What's going on? <laughs> Little battle there on the sideline. I don't know what else they could do. They've uh -oh. already dumped uh -oh. the Gator. A fumble and it's picked up. Number 42, Casey Krause taking it back. He may score to the 10, to the 5. No official could possibly be in position to rule on this. They're going to call him oh. down inside the one. And that looked like Jaden Peters. I think it was number 18 who saved that touchdown. Well, that's kind of typical of Hazen, huh? So close. Boy, oh boy. So close. And these things will happen when you got the third stringers in there. Actually, the pitch, yep. pitch was intended to Jaden Peters. Kraus appears to be on his way, but give credit to Peters, the man that the pitch was intended for coming all the way back and staying with it. That shows you how badly the Trinity Titans want to keep that zero up there. And I think that was a good call. He did not make it to the end zone on that play, but it'll be first and goal for Hazen and all the defensive starters of Trinity want to go back in the <laughs> game now. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching the game on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. In North Dakota, pride and performance go hand in hand. It's forming unspoken friendships. It's trusting neighbors, supporting community. 
And for 70 years, it's how Cenex has been doing business in North Dakota. You'll always receive high-quality, dependable, clean guard gasolines, backed by the Cenex performance promise. You've got our word on it. Cenex Clean Guard Gasolines, where pride and performance meet. Only at your local Cenex and Pride convenience store. Weather Talk is brought to you by Hanson Runsvold Funeral Home, serving for over 80 years. November and December, on the average, are the cloudiest months of the year around here. And the reason why is the sun, or really it's the solar angle. You see, this time of year the sun never gets very high in the sky. This causes a lot of air stagnation due to the lack of thermals. So once the weather turns cloudy in the fall, it tends to stay cloudy day after day. Welcome back to the Fargo Dome where Hazen has its best. <laughs> Another flag. <laughs> I mean, we Hazen... have seen every variety of penalty you can find. This flag was thrown. Yeah, Hazen wasn't even up to the line. But do you notice, Steve, the first stringers are back in for Hazen. Or at least Marshall appears to be out there at a quarterback. I think, Pat, there's something with the jerseys and the way they're being tucked in or, or not tucked in that's resulting in a couple of these penalties. Some sort of equipment issue because there was nobody even saying anything, so it couldn't have been something being said. And now Chris Marshall brings him under center. Give the ball this time. It is, I think, Wallander it is. Number 40 into the end zone. And the Bison are on the board. 48 to 6 now in favor of Dickinson Trinity. Well, a long fumble return set them up inside the one yard line, and Paul Wallander finishes it off. And I think both teams just, I don't want to say went through the motions, but it kind of sure looked like the Trinity defense was on that play. Well, he had McConnell and Grimm giving him the escort. And it was, we should point out, the second team defenders for Trinity against the first team offensive crew of the Bison. Now they'll go for two, why not? Full house backfield, Marshall rolling right. He's gonna throw it, looking for Nathan Folk. Had him open, but the pass a bit too strong. And 48-6 is our score. Well, 100 years from now, well, maybe not that long, but uh, 25, 30 years from now, the Hazen Bison will say, yeah, 48 to 6, we had them. That's right. We had them on the ropes. We, we scored the, an <laughs> offensive touchdown. <laughs> we were the last team to do it. And it was an offensive score, so yep. they are the second team this year now to score an offensive touchdown, although you really ought to call that almost a defensive That's score right. because... Four downs to go a foot. Not too tough of a job. And so a little pain deadener, I guess you could <laughs> say, for the Hazen Bison, being able to get on the scoreboard. And you never like to get shut out. It's bad enough when you lose in a lopsided game, but being shut out is a little salt in the wound. So what, what that'll make the Bison feel a little bit better about this, things. This Trinity team is so good. Even the third string quarterback has his own fan club. They had a sign there for the Lee Kidrowski fan club. Number 80. So we're at two minutes remaining here and uh, the Hayes and Bison will take away something to uh, to smile about here. And that's that's basically what they can focus on here. And, Take a little moral victory away from this terrific Titan team. Brandon Hadcock, the quick squib kick there, fielded by Jaden Nelson, and he'll take it out to about the 33-yard line before he's tackled. And I guess, you know, at a point like this, maybe it's morbid curiosity, Pat, I don't know, but I just wonder how many points Dickinson Trinity could have scored in this football game. You think back to what a great first half they had and so much talent. Basically calling off the dogs here in the second half. And look at the hard hits continue. Yeah. Look at Jaden Nelson, though, a junior fullback. He's proving that he's ready for next year. He's another tough one to bring down. So the fan club on its feet. Lee <laughs> Kadrowski under center. Oh. Give the ball. It trickles away from number 34 who had the carry. That was John Warner. The 5'8", 150-pound sophomore couldn't find the handle. And we're down to a minute 30 to go in this fourth quarter. 
Not the way Trinity wants to end the game here. That that one almost went uh, back the other way. Kudrowski, they give up to middle. They give up the middle, excuse me, to Luke Schweitzer. Number 42, the up back into the ball game. Schweitzer, a 160-pound sophomore. And we're in the final minute here, and everybody gets to play. 46, Daniel Krebs coming in now for Trinity, a sophomore running back. At this point, you really just hope the play gets in properly to the quarterback. And we'll have one more play in this football game, and that will put the exclamation point on an extremely dominating Dickinson Trinity win. Up the middle, fighting for yards. Jaden Peters in the game, and that's going to do it. Oh, look at this camera work. Terrific. <laughs> They had uh, they got him good. Rand Randy Gordon surrounded nowhere to turn or run. Congratulations in a classy move. Paul Wallander over the first guy to shake the hands of the Trinity Titans. Twenty four and oh the Trinity Titans in the last two years. They complete some kind of season 12 and 0 this year. Dakota Bowl champions for the second straight year. And they will talk about the Titans of 2001 as one of the best double A teams ever to play this game in North Dakota. And how about Hazen? Not a bad year. Their only two losses came to Dickinson Trinity. This is just one phenomenal state championship team. I, I can't recall any high school team and I've I've lived in North Dakota since 1980 putting up 48 points and a half. Eric Whitman is standing by I believe with Todd Johnson or has he got Randy Gordon. I believe he's got uh, Randy Randy Gordon down there. Eric, take it away. Yeah guys I do have Randy Gordon. Randy you just won your second straight uh, state championship. Which one feels better, first or the second? Well, I think I think it, they're both the same because you're working with different kids and they all take it differently. And uh, you know, uh, last year it was a little bit more of an intense uh, thing where it was our first one, but these kids have deserved it, and I and I think I have to enjoy it just as much for them as anything uh, as anybody else. Kyle Steff is an amazing performance, six touchdowns, Dakota Bowl record. Uh, just talk about his performance. Well, I'm, uh, one thing I'm sure going to miss him. You know, he's a he's a he's a great player and. Uh, 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 you can't. I mean, he's one of those guys that uh, you can run the right play, you can draw it on the paper, and if everybody gets their blocks, you can say it's going to be a. He's going to get a big play out of because he's got good speed. He's shifty, and I, we're really going to miss him. Talk about next season. I know you don't even want to look ahead, but a little bit about next season. What do you guys think for next year? Can you do it again? Oh, I, you know, we start all over. We've, we're going to have some uh, uh, younger guys in on ex inexperience. I think they're going to be good athletes, but we'll just. We'll just say we'll start all over again in August. All right, good deal. Congratulations, Randy. Go get your trophy. Thank you very much. Guys, we'll get it back up to you. I'm going to try and grab a couple more players. Sounds good, Eric. 48 to 6, the final score as Hazen scores a late touchdown to avoid the shutout. And now the teams from Bismarck and Fargo South have taken the field, beginning their warm ups. And Eric is now, I believe, got Kyle Steffes. Eric, send it back down to you. Yeah, Steve, I do. Kyle Steff is six touchdowns, new uh, Dakota Bowl record. Let's talk about their performance, man. Um, I don't know, it just felt great. Uh, we were preparing all week for this, and uh, I don't know, uh, before the game, we were just so mentally focused, and I guess I owe it to my O line. I mean, uh, this game, I've had bigger holes than I've had all season, and uh, each time I got the ball, I just saw light, so I just ran, and they blocked for me, and it all worked out great. Did you ever think you could come on here and set the, the record and make it a blowout the way it has been? Well, um, I, I knew we, uh, it was possible, but you know, I wasn't thinking that. I was just thinking I'll win today. 
You guys uh, now are repeat champions. Which one feels better, the first or the second? I'd have to uh, say this one because I just got my senior buddies with me. We've been playing together since in grade school, and uh, we're just all so close. I love all those guys, and I think this one feels better. I know uh, offensively you had a great performance. We talk about this defense. How good? A, how 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 much? How important were these guys for you? Oh, they are so important. Our defense coordinator, Mr. Holinka, he's so good. I haven't had anybody else to compare him to, but I mean, each each week he's got a great scheme for us, and we stick to that scheme, and it seems to work out good every every week. All right, thank you very much. Yep. Congratulations. Thanks. Go get your trophy. Kyle Steff has six touchdowns, a new Dakota Bowl record. NDSU and UND are looking at them. I'm sure they're licking their chops after today. Steve, back up to you guys. Boy, I would guess so, Eric. The Hazen Bison. Kind of a bittersweet deal of going out and accepting the second place plaques, but as time goes on, they'll look back, as you said, Pat, on a great season. So many things that they did well, and of course now we'll all be wondering and watching to see what Todd Johnson decides to do, and he had told you and Eric before the game that this may be his last game, so interesting to see what Todd uh, Johnson's future has in store. Todd's had a, a great career, 21 years at Hayes and 37 years in coaching overall, 206 career wins. He's already been inducted into the North Dakota Coaches Hall of Fame last year. But uh, Mr. Steff is there, talked about uh, Coach Holinka. We might as well uh, mention the uh, staff that Randy Gordon has because they've done a great job with Jerry Holenka, Greg Grinsteiner, Craig Kovash, Rick Gordon, and Carter Maynard. Okay, Eric is down on the field. He's got Kimball Fawatea, the flashy fullback. Eric? Yeah, I do, Steve. Kimball, obviously a, a great win for you guys. Uh, repeat champions. Just talk about that, what it's really meant for you guys. Um, it really means much, for, especially for our senior class. Um, this is what we was pushing for since we were sophomores, you know. Um, last year was a great season, but I feel that this year, since we were seniors, it was, it's a better year for us. and It's a good way to finish off our year. And I was glad how the boys turned out today, and I'm, I'm real happy and proud. A great performance by Kyle Steffes. Uh, did you sort of take it upon yourself after you got those first two, you know, we're going to go for a record? Did you start thinking, I'm going to start blowing up some big holes? Um, we're just taking it play by play, you know. We had two good drives, and, um, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen, but we knew we was going to stick it to them, so that's, that was our plan, just keep taking it to them. And we did, we did a great job today, so. After last year, you guys win the championship, maybe some teams take a little time off. Was it a sense of total determination at the start of the season to get back here and win it again? It was a sock. You know, most of our class last year was juniors played a lot. And um, our goal was just to have a repeat, you know, we just to come out here and this season and play hard, play every game. You guys faced Hazen earlier in the year. You got the win. Did you think maybe coming in you guys have an easier time or did, I mean, did you expect a game like this seeing these guys for the second time? No, I did not. Um, Hazen improved over after our game, you know, they blew out some teams and um, we was expecting the game. We came out here to play hard and, you know, it happened. We just, I guess we came out on top. That's... All right, good deal. Kimba Fawatea. Steve, back up to you guys. Congratulations. And it all starts with Kimba Fawatea. Yes, Kyle Steffes gets most of the yards and most of the touchdowns, but Randy Gordon will tell you our offense is predicated on establishing the fullback and any coach will tell you if we can get that big guy rumbling up the middle for good yardage we can do a lot of other things because of that when the defense starts reacting to that first. We certainly saw that today with the long runs of Kyle Steffes and Jacob Oderman through the air was successful and uh, very effective when he was called on to throw the football he was right on the money. Such a complete team the, the Titans haven't really needed to throw the football and Maybe that's kind of a tough break for the receivers for this Trinity team. <laughs> Tyler Glosser, number three. Joey Steiner, number 19. Matt Hurst, receiver. Joe Volk, the tight end. Some great athletes on that bunch, but you don't get to see too much of them catching the football because of their dominance on the rushing side of things. Now what it'll, it'll be interesting to see, Steve, is how these teams will do once the boys' basketball season begins because a lot of these guys are, are on their school's respective basketball teams. And, they're expecting a battle there as well. There's, uh, there you see uh, young Mr. Height, number 52, Chad Height, kind of limping up to get his award. That's too bad to see uh, the senior get injured in his last game, but he goes out with a state title. And so we have three championships here in the books. The nine-man final goes to Strasburg, Zealand. The Class A championship won by Velva Sawyer. It was 36-8, Strasburg-Zeeland over Maddock. 
Harvey falls to Velvet Sawyer 27 to 22. 48 to 6, Dickinson Trinity beats Hazen in our double A final. And coming up in just a few minutes, the class triple A final. Undefeated Bismarck and undefeated Fargo South. See the Bruins warming up here in the south end zone. And there is the hardware that the Trinity Titans will take back to Dickinson. This was well worth the trip, wasn't it? That's a long haul, but they brought a lot of fans out with them. And it's great to see the support from all corners of the state here. And if you think Trinity is explosive, we've got two more uh, teams that can put up the points coming up here with Fargo South and Bismarck, the top two teams in Class AAA. And for the Dickinson Trinity Titans, a moment that they wish could last about 10 hours. Being able to walk up there individually, pick up those championship plaques, and those will have very special places on somebody's college dorm room next fall or in the living room at home. Eric Woodman is back on the field with some more post-game reaction. Eric. Yeah, guys, we got Todd Johnson here. Todd, obviously uh, not the outcome you'd hope for. Uh, just your comments on the game overall. Well, we'd have to do things a lot different to beat them. Uh, we actually thought that if everything worked, we might nip them with our kicker. But obviously that's not it. You saw what type of good team we are. And, uh, we uh, Told them at halftime we had to try and play at least decent ball in the second half. But it looks like we shut them out and scored, so we won the second half 6 to nothing. Uh, I'm going to decide on whether I'm coming back to coach now. And uh, you did have a little, little bit of a hope watching all the kids that will be back next year play, and they hit hard and gang tackled, and uh, it was fun. We made a couple of mistakes with that group too, and maybe we could have scored another time. But I thought we could drive the ball. It's been a great run with these kids. Most of them uh, have been on a three-year plan, and uh, it's going to be tough to lose them, but I've lost other great kids, too. So I'm going to take the winner and decide what I'm going to do. And, uh, most of the young kids, I'm sure, will get right to work and think about next year because they're down here. Some of them said, well, we can come back next year, folks. So uh, I guess if they think that, uh, we'll see. I might get, I might be fired up in the, about nine months. Yeah, I know you just sort of talked about it, but are you leaning one way or the other right now? I mean, does a loss like this sort of make you think one thing or not? A loss like this would maybe want uh, normally a younger me come back and see if we could get back at him sometime, but uh, I don't know. I am uh, only three years away from the actual retirement and uh, getting a little tired, and I said I never wanted to back up to get a check. I don't get paid a lot to coach anyhow, and uh, I have to really think about it. I got to that point 10 years ago in track and just walked away. I haven't been there track meet since, so I have a new boat and a new camper, and I might do some things that are a little bit less happy. But still fun, and I love the kids, and uh, that was only my 115th loss, so, you know, we're still, we're still going to maybe come back after that. I don't know how to look at it. I got a good bunch of kids coming back, so the covered wouldn't be bare with some good young good seniors next year 10 good ones some good juniors so uh, we have to maybe go recruit a little bit and get more kids in the halls out our numbers won't be good but i'm still uh i'm still a little bit fired up i guess i'm very pleased with our kids we'll have some all-state players and uh I'll have to try not to have as many Saturday games next year because there's going to be four, five, six of these kids playing college someplace, and I'd like to go watch them play. But Trinity's an excellent team. We lost to the best. Uh, we had we were ranked second at the end, and that's what we are. So we're we're pleased. Ten and two is a good record. So I appreciate your coverage. Todd Johnson, thank you very much. Congratulations on a great season. Todd Johnson, head coach of the Bison, thinking about retirement after 21 years here, 37 overall. Steve Pat, back up to you guys. Well, he's got a new boat and a new camper, and he still doesn't know? Come on now, coach. That sounds like a good time. But you know what? There's that competitor that burns inside of all of us, and certainly if you've done the job that he has for as long as he has, there's something inside of you that says, I'm not going to go out that way. So we'll have to wait and see what the winner holds. And Coach Johnson telling us that he'll take a little while to decide. In any case, it's been a great run for Todd Johnson. 37 years of coaching, a record of 205, 115, and two ties. His 21st year at Hazen, 100. 
45 and 72. And Pat, uh, just a minute ago on the field, we couldn't hear the uh, presentation, but a couple of big awards handed out for the Trinity Titans. Well, you make it a clean sweep for Dickinson Trinity. Kyle Steffes is the Class AA Player of the Year, and Randy Gordon, the Class AA Coach of the Year. So it's all going Trinity's way today. Well, it's tough to argue with either nomination there, Pat. Kyle Steff is just a phenomenal player, and we may not have seen all that Kyle Steff has to offer because he was really limited to maybe about a half, maybe just a little more good play. And Randy Gordon has done such a great job with these kids, and it's so fun to hear a coach that says, I just really enjoy being around these guys, and I do feel lucky, and I am a lucky guy. And uh, certainly refreshing sentiments from him. Final game stats, Pat. I guess it shows the domination that we saw here during this ball game, and most of the numbers put up by the Titans happen in the first half. Well, it sure helps to have a two-pronged attack. Steffes with 132 rushing yards, Fawatea 107, and a total of 303 for uh, Dickinson Trinity. That is not, uh, that is well short of the record for the Dakota Bowl of, of 364 yards rushing by South in 1996, but nonetheless, a dominant performance. Hazen found more success uh, rushing than passing with uh, 11 yards to 111 yards. But the turnovers uh, were, were crucial and penalties as well. We go back to that stretch as we said when it was 13-0 Trinity and Hazen appeared to bring a, a, a fumble all the way back into the end zone for a touchdown and that was negated by a penalty and that that really hurt the Bison from getting any solid momentum early in the game, and Dickinson Trinity just ran with it from there. So it is a perfect ending to a perfect season for Dickinson Trinity. Kyle Steffes with not three, not four, not five, six touchdown runs today. He was amazing, and so were the Titans, the class double-A champions for the second straight year. Their star, Kyle Steffes, the player of the year, their coach, Randy Gordon, coach of the year. A dominating win, finishing a dominating season. Congratulations to the Dickinson Trinity Titans, 2001 state champions. We've got another game, the AAA final, Bismarck and Fargo South, just a few minutes away. You're watching the state championships on WDAY, WDAZ, KBMY, and KMCY. Well, I was eight years old when I started racing motocross. Flat out as fast as you can go for two hours. To it, I don't even really think that I have it. It refers to the prosthesis Hermanson wears. I'm thinking in a couple years I'm going to try and get some more sponsors and then go up to like sprint cars or modifieds or something, something bigger. And to know that everybody else is there, and, you know, and they're with you and they're all feeling your pain. What is your winter wish? News Talk 970 WDAY is out to make you a winner. I'd love a brand new snowmobile. Win a 2002 Yamaha from University Motors. I'm wishing for a diamond. Win a beautiful $5,000 diamond from Classic Jewelers. I really need a new computer. A Dell computer system from the computer place could be yours. How about a cool new pool table? Win a Sun Shooter billiard table from Western Products. Wish it, win it with 970 WDAY. Just look for the Winter Wish app in the forum. Register and listen to win with News Talk 970 WDAY. Tom has turned to alcohol as a way to deal with feelings about his parents' divorce. And his choices have consequences. You look so good at practice this summer, Tom. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry, but you didn't make the team. That could lead to another loss. Dakota Boys Ranch programs help youth who are going through